KCWM Hondo 1460 and on the World Wide Web. We broadcast at KCWM.net. Good morning. It's just past 9 o'clock. Tuesday morning, December 16th, we've been telling you we had some special company that was going to be uh, arriving here this morning. We've got more special company coming by several times. Santa Claus drops by occasionally. Don't forget the great Christmas tamale giveaway is going on when you hear Santa Claus be the First caller at 830-741-5296. We'll put a package of tamales underneath yon Christmas tree for you, the Christmas tree right over there in the corner. But George Chambers is here with us today, and, uh, man, we're excited about it. We've been telling you about it for quite some time, too, what we're going to do to start things off. I'm going to play you some George Chambers music, and then we're going to open up the microphones and have a great visit with George this morning. in a cow town a Saturday night, a little bitty boy watched me putting up the lights to my medicine wagon and my sea and all scream. He said it was the best thing he ever had seen. Said, oh, what you doing? Told him that was the best. What's your name? I said, it's King Dong Howdy. The best old time that you're ever gonna have is a King Dong Howdy and the never the best. Oh, never the best. Oh, King Dong Howdy. The best old time that you're ever gonna have is a King Dong Howdy and the never the best. That's uh, George Chambers right there. I guess uh, I want to say George Chambers and the country gentleman. Let's get George up to the uh, microphone there. Make yourself comfortable there, Senor. You can move that mic. You probably have uh, spent a little time at uh, microphone before in the past, so I think you probably know how to get comfortable over there. And Lucas is with us. Good morning, Ann. Hey, how are you doing over there? Excited to be here. Well, great. It's uh, exciting to have you here. And uh, it's kind of exciting to have this gentleman sitting back over here in the corner with us. Too. He all are desperate. <laughs> Old buddy George Chambers. Man, we've been friends a long time, George. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We don't want to talk about how long, really. No, heck no. <laughs> week, maybe two. Yeah. Well, by the way, i got to tell you, uh, of course, legally, I have to tell you right up front, we're recording here. This morning for posterity, we may uh, you know get something on a recording here that they want in the in the Hall of Fame or something. The Smithsonian yeah. Institute. <laughs> he can always <laughs> use it to get rid of the insects. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> Ding dong, howdy. Let's uh, let's start right from the uh, get going. We're gonna we're gonna play uh, a lot of stuff off of your new CD. What's the name of the new CD? It's called The Journey Continues. It's been quite a journey, too, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's a long one. All right. We're going to talk all yeah, about that. We're going to play every cut off of there. 
And uh, I asked you to bring uh, some of the stuff that I don't have here at the radio station, which I do now have. So I'm yeah. excited about uh, getting some of that stuff into our well, minds. I didn't know you didn't have it, or I'd have brought it down here a long time ago. You know. Well, I'm happy to have it now. We're going to be playing the heck out of it. I'll guarantee. Well, I appreciate you. that. Thank Let's you. Let's talk about Ding Dong Howdy. Where'd that song come from? Well, Augie Meyer went into you know Jerry Blanton has a steel guitar shop down on Zarzamora and. Everybody was always in and out of there. So I don't, I don't know how he ever got any steel built. <laughs> yeah. But, but Augie came in with thing and said, Jerry, I got a song as a hit for you. He says, it's written by a straight hat. And Jerry said, what do you mean a straight hat? You know, one of those guys from Utah. <laughs> He's a Quaker or you know, a Mormon or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Looked like the guy on the front of the oatmeal box. Yeah, sure. And, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, you hear that line all the time. Yeah, I got a hit for you, got a hit for you. So yeah. he gave Jerry the tape, and Jerry gave me the tape. And I learned the song, and we started recording it. We recorded it probably 30 different times in a matter of a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we finally got in the studio without anybody around except we cut it at Zaz Studios out of West Commerce there in San Antonio. Uh, Augie turned us on to that. He said, yeah. you need to go out there and record. So, yeah. Now, who, who had the studio? Joey Lopez. Yeah. And you talk about a prince of a guy. Yeah. Joey, Joey was, he's, well, he, I, I think he's moved to California. Somebody told me, but I'm not sure. Yeah. He's still, Zaz is still out there, and his daughter's running the pressing plant and so on. And I guess the studio's still. Z A Z. Z A Z, yeah. yeah. And that means something in Spanish. I don't know yeah. what. Uh, but anyway, it was just uh, the band and Joey and, and nobody else out there. And we ended up getting the final cut. We did it, listened to it. Said, That's pretty good. I said, Maybe keep that, Joey. says, do it one more time. He had ears like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. And as we did it one more time. He said, That's it. And, you know, it was really kind of a primitive studio. We cut it on an eight track. Ampex one-inch tape machine that belonged to Joe South, who wrote the games people play. Yeah, and he recorded yeah. the games people play on that recorder, yeah. and he got another recorder. And Joey bought that thing from him. Joey told me, he says, "This is a hit cutter." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." They all say that, <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how the record came about. And when we finally got it out, I took it out to Max Gardner. He was on. Uh, KKYX at the time from midnight to six, sure. mm -hmm. and he plays it. And he says that's going to be a hit. I said, yeah, don't give me that. You know, I've done this before because we'd had a bunch of records out before that that did pretty well. Yeah. The whole secret to doing well with a record is getting a little airplay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you got a great record, nobody hears it. You know, it's what yeah. the deal is. But, yeah. but uh, you know, they were really good to us with those fifty thousand watts. Oh yeah, and. Uh, Darn it, it was a legitimate number one tune in this area. There was no hype, no promotion, no nothing. Great song. You know, other than just, you know, the help we got from the, the radio station. And, uh, well, the song feels good, you yeah. know, and, and you look for those kind of songs as a radio programmer. You want those kind of songs that, that you know, kind of jump off the radio dial, and that one does it. People like it. Yeah, it feels good to yeah. listen to it. Well, you know, we were lucky because all the guys in our band, you know, we weren't the... You know, uh, hot shot musicians, but they all kind of went for that feel thing and ideas. You know, Jerry yeah. and Bert and David Zettner yeah. uh, could come up with these ideas for all this stuff. You know, that uh, on the first album, I listened to that thing the other day, and uh, we did that night in the uh, mid '60s, mm -hmm. and we did most of it at Texas Sound Studios. I did uh, three cuts in Nashville, and the rest of the stuff on it we did. Right here right, at home. Right there on Hildebrand, yeah. yeah. And the ideas the guys came up with for the guitar breaks and, and this and that and the other. We used upright bass and drums, you know, those, uh, back in the days when uh, you could use both. And David Zettner was uh, an outrageously good talent. I want to ask you about uh, the guys yeah. that have, have been with the country gentlemen over the years, and that's a good place to start. Let's talk about David. And, uh, well, he was you knew him for all, all your oh, life. Oh, yeah. Well, Stanley's little brother, you know. That's, yeah. uh, and uh, I've known him since he was like this tall. Stanley plays uh, keyboard and accordion with me yeah. these days. And yeah. Stanley's a good a, guy. He's a know. pistol. Oh, I know. Uh, but man, he's, they've been that way. But David was the artist of the family, you know. And they, he... Uh, he went to work for us, playing with us, right? He was a senior in high school. Yeah. 
right then. Who's a nice he, man, he, too. Just yeah, oh, yeah. Sweetheart. An excellent player. Man, he played yeah. guitar. He played the horn. I don't know what he played in the band. He was in a high school band hmm. when he was in high school. But he played bass with us. He could play bass and guitar, and we could swap around. One thing we did, we swapped around, and everybody had a slot at the microphone, except Joe, the drummer. And then he finally got enough money to where he could pay us, and we'd let him sing. So so David went on and uh, later, I guess, most uh, famously uh, worked with Willie Nelson. Yeah, well, Willie hired him from us. You know, we were doing, back in the the 60s, you know, uh, Johnny Bush, I've known John for a million years, it seems like. He wouldn't like me to say that because he doesn't think he's that old yet. He thinks he's still young. Mm -hmm. He is (laughs) singing better than I've ever heard him sing. Now, yeah, just but anyway, he uh, I hired John to play drums with us. We were going to work with uh, Jimmy Dickens at Cherry Springs Tavern. This was way back in 1961 or two or three or something. Yeah. Anyway, I got to know John then. And John, you know, worked for Ray Price and then he worked for Willie. And he was working for Willie and they were trying to put a little trio or something together. And uh, we were doing a lot of dates with them where, where we'd do the dance sets and. Willie would get up and do his deal, but his deal was he told Jerry, he says, anybody wants to get up and play while I'm on, just all get up there, and, and, and you know, just you know, if you want to. Yeah, that was kind of the open deal. Most of us, we just wanted to sit and listen, so mm-hmm. sure, he get up there and play. But when he finally decided he was going to go with uh, like his three-piece deal, he hired David to play bass, mm-hmm. and uh, David, well, David was with him. You know, uh, until he got drafted, and we'd, in the meantime, we'd hired a guy named B. Spears, who lived out on the scenic loop. We'd known that family forever. You know, we all grew up together yeah. in that area of the county. And uh, so uh, B. was playing with us. When David went off to Fort Bliss and sat there for six months waiting for the Army to make up their mind what they were going to do with him, uh, here comes Jimmy Day steel guitar player with Willie and says, come on, B. <laughs> so he, he got B. And, uh, so you're took kind of like Willie's Willie. farm club. Yeah, you'd think so, yeah. <laughs> Taking all your players. But, uh, next, the next guy we hired from bass, a guy named Preston Buchanan, who'd been playing with a bunch of pseudo rock and roll bands around San Antonio, like yeah. Denny Hesbud and that yeah. bunch. Yeah. And <laughs> we played Panther Hall in Fort Worth when Charlie Pride cut his live album there. Mm-hmm. And again, we were doing the, you know, the dance sets, yeah. which was fine. We well, we got to do a couple of hours, and then sure. you know, the mm-hmm. star would come on, and we'd stand around. Uh, and we got back you know, on Sunday, and we were fooling around. Tuesday, Charlie Pride calls Preston and says, I need a bass player. So off Preston went to the Pride thing. Wow. He was with Pride for 30 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, we kept shuffling those guys out. Mm-hmm. We must have been hard on bass players, I think. Well, that's the. <laughs> but, but you know, that's a real accolade to have somebody who uh, is at that level. Yeah, sure. Hire somebody from you mm-hmm. to think enough of the players that, right. that are in the band. Because we never were an I and band, you know, like. It's my band. It was our band, you know. It sure. was a wee band, you know. We were all just a, a unit. And everybody had a job in the band, and we could roll and take them around. We were lucky enough to have uh, everybody in the band could sing. Well, that takes yeah. care of uh, somewhat, anyway, David Zetner. But we, yeah, we, but he, uh, you know, he what he did, you know, when he got that back out of the Army, uh, the army kept him for six months and decided his feet were too big, so he couldn't be in the army. <laughs> so he uh, he worked with some just you know different bands, kind of yeah. kicked around for a while, and then he went back to work for Willie uh, up at uh, the ranch, yeah. up at Smicewood, right. doing his artwork and playing on a few right. sessions. He didn't he wasn't on the road with him right. playing. Right. But he and Willie were really close. Now, he was playing steel guitar on some Oh, he played, he played everything. Yeah. Right? He, he, he played guitar. He played steel. He yeah. played bass. Kind of like you and me, huh? And, you know, I can't hardly <laughs> find the strings on the guitar. You know? <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to play some, some more of the music, and uh, we're going to feature the new CD. But we're going to play a couple of the older songs, too. 
And uh, I haven't forgotten that Ann Lucas is here with us. Ann. I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm right. intrigued here. We'll let you introduce this next song if you'll uh, tell everybody. This is Marie. This is Marie. <laughs> There's our uh, special guest this morning. George Chambers is here with us. And you like that song? That's nice. I do. Huh? Nice song. Yeah. Marie, follow me. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, band a little bit more, but we're going to talk about the songwriter, the guy that wrote that song right there. George has been with you for a long time, hasn't he? Yeah, we've been kicking around together for... Ron Knuth. Ron Knuth, yeah. Yeah, you know, he... Somebody else recorded this song, too, didn't they? Uh, Little Joe and La Familia. Yeah, oh. Recorded, and Willie sang on it, yeah. on that record. Yeah. You know, Willie's, including you, Willie's sung with just about everybody but me. He's, well, man, he's, call him uh, up, you <laughs> he, he, he likes to do duets and stuff, doesn't he? he he's uh, very open to that kind of thing, yeah. it seems like. It's you know. all about the music, and he, tr he is a true music man, isn't he? Oh, yes. We'll come back and talk about him here in a little bit, but let's uh, let's talk about Ron. Ron, uh, how did you how did you run across Ron? Well, Ron, well, he moved out here in 1972. He and Hank Singer to work for uh, Johnny Bush. Yeah, that's where I met him. You know, he was working for Bush, and uh, you know, and he worked for Bush for I don't know how long, and then he kicked around here and there doing this and that, and he finally went to work with us for I don't know how many years. And, uh, and we still do some stuff together, you know, just duo stuff. And then sometimes if we take the band out, you know, we try to get Ron and, you know, I can get the same old guys. Sure. If we get enough wheelchairs to get them in there, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, Ron's a good writer. And he's, uh, you know, he, he used to just play fiddle. But now when you go, uh, he plays a lot with Johnny Bush now, you know, kind of on an independent basis. But John uses him a bunch because he plays accordion, but he's got a button, a couple of button accordions. Oh, okay. And he plays mandolin. Yeah. And he plays guitar. And there's a cut on the new album that he wrote that he played guitar on. He came in the studio, and we listened to the mix, and he did the guitar in one take. Wow. I mean, we wasn't there five minutes, <laughs> and he's gone. That's that's pretty incredible. I mean, he's an outrageously talented yeah. individual. You know, just really, a, he's a good writer, good good singer. You know, he sings good. And, you know, we worked all those years at Gallagher's as Bert and Ron and I. You know, as a trio for eleven years there at uh, on Interstate Ten in Wurzbach when that restaurant was there. Mm -hmm. 
and I guess that's where we kind of honed things because in there you could be real loose and didn't make any difference because it was so noisy and people were in there just having a good time. And we worked up a lot of really nice three part harmony stuff, you know, and, and uh, it got to be got to be like Cheers, you know, it was one of those kind of deals. But Ron is a he's a just an extremely talented guy. Well, guys on the bandstand really uh, get, they just have a sense of where the next, where the other guy's going, and it, and it just develops, and the more you play with someone, the easier it gets, isn't it? Yeah. Or supposed yeah. to, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Not always, but uh, let's talk about the band itself. When did you, uh, as far as the country gentleman, uh, was that always the name of the band? Is that no, it? you know, we... <laughs> We started playing, we had a band in 1952, and uh, I was a freshman in high school at uh, what was, what's now John Marshall, it's North, the Northside High School. Right. And uh, the uh, school was, you know, country schools, and, and uh, the first graduating class was uh, in 51, had eight people. In it. And the next one had wow. 32 people in it, you know, and I think mine had 51 people in it anyway. Well, we were all taking vocational agriculture. There was a bunch of guys in there. There was a guy in there who played bass. There was a guy in there named Paul Keim, who's a, a well-known Western artist, you know, painter. Mm -hmm. He does Western scenes, playing piano. He, he played piano. And I played guitar. And we had a guy from... Uh, we had found this uh, guy who went to school over at, at Northeast, over there on Nacogdoches Road, whatever it is. And, you know, it's now uh, MacArthur yeah. High School. Yeah. His name is Don Misher. He played steel. He was taken from Lloyd Baker down at the same time Denny Mathis was taking mm -hmm. steel lessons down there. So we got, got Don to come. Don, now if you watch the uh, Emmys, or the Atlanta Olympics, the closing ceremonies, or any of the Bob Hope specials. He's produced all that stuff. He's a big time TV producer, you know, and nationally known Emmy, you know, winner and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But he was our steel guitar player. And uh, let's see, who else was in that band? Blanton, I think, was playing guitar. He wasn't playing steel, then he was playing guitar. And we, anyway, he had a six piece band. And we didn't have a name, but we were working at Floors Country Store every Sunday. One of the oh, man. guys' parents knew John T., and he needed a band out there. <laughs> I, I wish I had a recording of that band. I bet we were so bad. You know, we all thought we were stars. <laughs> yeah. And you were out there playing for the kitty, but, you know, we'd get 50 or $60 in, in quarters in that pot yeah. on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And back in 1952, $10 was a whole lot of money. Yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, and so everybody keep it all in quarters. You have a pocket full, yeah. you know, change, big thing like that. What about the uh, the rest of the, uh, uh, although there weren't all that many of them, but the rest of the kids over at the school, what did they all think of uh, you guys? Were you all big stars around the school? Oh, no, yeah. A, you know, this is a big, big deal. Yeah, There's a bunch of players, you know, and yeah. during lunch we'd get in the book room. They had a book room where they kept all the textbooks, yeah. you know, and stored them in there. We'd yeah. get in there and play during lunch, you know, just like whoever could play a guitar a little bit. Yeah. You know. It was, a, you know, it was, of course, you know, television was just coming in and nobody had cars. You had to walk everywhere you went or ride a horse or ride a bicycle or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. And so it, uh, so the guy that had the car obviously got in the band too. Huh? Oh yeah, but it, it was a, it was kind of a really a neat place to grow up. And, and San Antonio's changed a lot, hasn't it? Oh gosh, I guess. But you know, it still kind of has that old San Antonio feel. Yeah. You know, I guess it always will. It's just that that charm of the city, but it's it's kind of unbelievable how much it's grown, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's just taken over. You know, but, uh, you go out interstate. 10 West, and if you look off to the side, you see subdivision there, so all, all the way to Bernie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just, it's really, uh, really a shame to turn up at a hill country like that, you know. Yeah. But that's, uh, you know, Texas itself yeah. is considerably larger than it was back in the days like we were talking that, about. Like that line in the John Prine tune, you know, they wrote it all off as the progress of man, <laughs> you know, the yeah. destruction of all that neat areas. 
We want to talk some more about some of the other guys in the band. Let's talk about Bert. Well, Where would you find him and how long is he? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know where we found him. He's part Bert. of the trio. I, right? I really don't know. But, you know, he, he's been our guitar player for forever. He's basically retired now. He, he doesn't, you know, if we take the band out, he won't go. He just, ah, he says, I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. But he'll come out to, uh, you know, the old Texas Star Inn and play. If Jerry comes, Bert comes, and they'll come out and sit in and play. Yeah. You know, and he still plays. He's he's the thing. Bert plays bass and he plays guitar. And uh, he's he's got a, a unique musical mind, and he he comes up with all his these ideas that nobody else does. Little runs and so on and so forth. When we'd uh, work shows with Willie, a lot of times B or David be off doing something, and Bert get up and play bass with Willie because he knew all the runs and all the yeah. Stuff on the bass, and he just—I I really don't remember where how Bert, you know, appeared. I mean, he popped out of a box or what have you. Know. <laughs> but he's been with you for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, good gosh, it's sixty, no, fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Yeah, you know, yeah. so what about drums? Who's? Uh, let's talk about who's well, been we, back we've, there we've holding run, the beat we've, for We've you. run through a lot of drummers. Well. Yeah. I think I know a lot of them. Uh, uh, Joe McAllister was uh, probably, uh, I don't know who played drums before Joe. I don't remember. But Joe and David were in the same graduating class at John Marshall. Uh-huh. So Joe went to work for us. And Joe lives in Austin. He's a multimillionaire now. You know, he got smart and got out of music business. Yeah. Hard know. to get those kind of guys to play music very much, isn't it? Those multimillionaires. But he, uh, and Joe played with us for like four or five years, and uh, Joe went to work for in Johnny Bush's first band. Bush hired Joe to come, you know, play with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, good drummer, funny guy. He'd get up and sing a few songs. He had some comedy acts, and he was just really a, a funny, funny, funny guy, you know, and a good guy. And I don't remember who came in the band after that, drummer-wise. Um, we had uh, Larry Robertson played uh, drums with us for a long time, and then and a guy named Terry Yarbrough played bass and sang with us. Terry was a good singer, and Terry had a little band of his own at one time. And they both got hired by Daryl McCall when uh, Daryl put a band together. And we got a, There's two Larrys, right? Big Larry and Little. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, Big Larry's a guitar player. Yeah. Okay. And, and he played. Larry, what was his last name? Larry Patton. Yeah. 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 And he'd come sit in with us, you know. But he never was a real member yeah. of the band. Yeah. And, and uh, Little Larry. He's. Uh, yeah, that's Little Larry. Well, yeah, he, Little he, Larry was, and he's he, and, salty, he and Terry. Yeah, and um, when Little Larry and Terry went to work for Daryl McCall, we hired a guy named Leroy McGee to play bass, and um, a guy named David Dennis play drums and David was with us for a long time he ended up being a big bureaucrat out at uh, Shirt Cibolo he was in charge of the Cibolo Creek Municipal Authority man you've had a lot of guys have been very successful that have left music because of you huh? yeah we gave him a, yeah we gave him a lot of ra- <laughs> or, or, you know a lot of stuff about the, the bureaucrat you know. yeah, yeah. Right. but he was a good David was a good drummer Really a good drummer, you know. And then Larry went back to work for us. Finally, Larry, when uh, Larry went from uh, Larry and Ron and who else? One, somebody else worked for Hank Jr. And they were working for Hank Jr. when he fell down the mountain. Oh, well, that's a long oh, time. Wow, ago. I that, remember that. Oh yeah, and that put him out of business, you know, for that. Yeah, and they sure. were still living in Nashville. When they finally got back to San Antonio, then Larry went back to work for us. And, uh, you know, he's been kind of working with us ever since. You know, when we take the band out, that's the drummer of choice. Yeah. You know. That's the A team. Yeah. And Those are the guys. Boy, that, they are. Too because they, they know what to do, you know, and they've learned how to do it. And yeah. they know when to play and how to play. And, yeah. and, uh, so you use really nice dynamics. You know, we do a lot of, when we put the band together, we do a lot of backup work, you know, working with, yeah. you know, who knows what. We just got back from Blue, uh, down in Victoria. They have a big fundraiser for the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch. 
every year golf tournament and that kind of yeah. thing, and mm-hmm. they have shows. And they get multi celebrities to come down. And this last one we worked with Pat Green and Jack Ingram and Janie Fricky and you know Geronimo Trevino and mm-hmm. Bobby Flores was down there. You know on that that show, and I don't remember who else. Uh, Rick Trevino, just a whole bunch of people. But they they know what to do and how to play behind them, and you know when to you know when to do what. And that's uh, something that a lot of a lot of bands don't seem to to have. They all want to turn up as loud as they can play, and you know, run the people out. And you got to know when to hold them, you know, sure. <laughs> when to fold them. You know, it's, it's one of these deals. And uh, it uh, it's it's really interesting, you know, because the the uh, the talent that all those guys have. You know. George Chambers is with us, and uh, we've been. Uh, telling you for quite some time about George is going to stop by and we're going to play uh, all the music off his new CD and uh, we're going to continue to play that uh, for you here on KCWM. We also got some of the great old George Chambers music and uh, also the uh, pleasure of visiting with George. You learning anything, Ann? I am. I'm learning so uh-huh. much. This is a pretty good history lesson right <laughs> here. Is. So uh, I noticed you had your notebook out and you are kind of taking it. Yeah, we're going to have a test. He's answering all my yeah. questions without me even having to ask them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, George was a longtime school teacher, so he just said we're going to have a test later on and we'll do that. Let's take a break right. here and we'll come back and we'll play some more of uh, George's music. Ann, you remember the... Uh, the song, uh, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree. I do remember that okay. song. George did the original version of that. Oh, nice. Long before that song came out. We're going to play that. Ah, Coming up next. Shut eyes more for the Fickle Pickle store in Bandera. You know the Fickle Pickles lady, Billy Shaw, developed the recipe for these special tasting pickles in the early 70s, and she passed it on to her daughter Lisa and son-in-law Jake. They have another store in Bernie and had it for some 30 years. We now have another location, the new store in Bandera. It's on Main Street between Shoe Biz and the OST. The first step in discovering just how good this pickle is, step up to the tasting counter and sample it for yourself. For your already good potato salad, tuna fish, or egg salad, add our fickle pickle to it, and you'll be the talk of the town. Now, we ship fickle pickles nationwide with a minimum of three pints or 12 pints in a case. In addition, the Fickle Pickle store in Bandera will be filled with home furnishings, quality antiques, Western art, plus a selection of hand-forged tools dating back to the 1800s. You'll love the taste of these Fickle Pickles. Oh, by the way, we also have Fickle Pickle marinade to enhance the flavor of chicken breast, pork chops, shrimp, and biscuits. Fickle Pickles in Bandera and Bernie. Come see us soon. Ficklepickles.com on Main Street in Bandera. If you have an electronic gift in mind, Cross Connections Radio Shack at 1110 18th Street has a huge selection of ideas for you. This is your one-stop shop for phones, security systems, cameras, computers, toys, GPS, and anything in between. You're sure to find what you're looking for at the local Radio Shack. Come on by and see Stacy, Michelle, Ashley, Amanda, and Tricia for all of your technology needs and questions. These girls are super helpful, friendly, and knowledgeable. Cross Connections Radio Shack and Downtown Hondo. Cartoons on the radio. What a party, brother! I never had so much fun in my life! <laughs> Get your cartoons, mornings with Mike Carr on KCWM. All right, we're back with George Chambers, and uh, we're talking about uh, one of the songs that I, I remember this uh, song really from, I guess, one of the. First songs, and I'm, I'm thinking probably mid '70s when I heard this song. But let's get George to talk about it a little bit. I said it's the original version of "Tie a Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree," and it's kind of the same story, but a different song. Yeah, it's a different song. A guy that was living in Bandera called me one day. His name was Jim Foster. His name still is Jim Foster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's well, changed. That's, that's I don't surprise. think he's changed it. He wrote, George, you've got a lot of friends that have changed their names. <laughs> yeah, Jim. That's because the FBI is <laughs> searching sure. for him. Alias. But <laughs> Jim used to come down to Cabaret some, and uh, he was running the Purple Cow that was in the old Frontier Hotel up there. Yeah, it's yeah. gone now. You right. know, it burned sure. down. Right. And uh, he said this guy came in and told him this story. One night, yeah. you know, and he wrote a song called me. He says, "I got a song for you." And at the time, Jim was managing the 
out at Lost Valley, you know, they built a racetrack and they had that ghost yeah. town out there, yeah. in Western yeah. Town, right. and they had a real nice motel there at the time. And Jim was uh, managing that whole complex. And he called me and said, Come up here and uh, listen to this song. You know, I said, Okay. So I got my old Wallen Sack reel to reel recorder, you know, and off yeah. he went. And we got in one of the rooms there, and he, he sang it to me. And uh, this was in the fall of 65, I think, sometime in the last century, you know. And uh, so I went home and learned it, and we went down there and recorded it. You know, it took us like seven hours to do the song, you know, to get it like we wanted it. Yeah. And uh, at the time, our booking agent was worked for RCA Victor in record sales and promotion and that sort of at a place called Parish Ankle Company. It was RCA's Texas hub. Yeah. And uh, Jesse Snyder was in charge of the office in this and that. Jesse had moved down here. He was down here originally. He was from Fredericksburg originally, I think. But he moved to Nashville and was managing Johnny and Jack and Kitty Wells and got tired of that Nashville deal. You know, and so they, he moved back down here working with RCA. And uh, so he said, well, let me see if I can get us a, a deal on this record. Because uh, we had uh, done some, you know, the Walk Another Mile and uh, something else, you know, before the ribbon. And uh, this guy from Hanna-Barbera, Tom Ayers was his name, flew down here. Listen to the song. We went out to supper, and, uh, and uh, he told Jesse, he says, we can do this. We'll release this tune. And they did. You know, and uh, it was, boy, uh, Max Gardner was at Cape Bear at the time. And thanks to Max, he played that song four times a day for six months. Yeah. And <laughs> I told <laughs> Tony Max, people are going to get tired of listening to that stupid song. I get requests for that song all the time. Still. And that was, gee, yeah. what, 40, 50 Great years song. ago? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm only 18, but that's... Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, but it, it was a really good story song. Then when Tie Yellow Ribbon came out, it was like 10 years later or so, you know, in the mid-70s, I guess is when yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. You know, they went round and round. I think there was a lawsuit. I, was, I always wondered when I heard uh, "Tie Yellow Ribbon" the first time. I said somebody got that idea from Chambers Ribbon. Yeah, I don't know who wrote "Tie Yellow Ribbon," but um, they had they had the big hit. Hanna Barbera, if they'd have done some promotion, I think would have had it. We've mm -hmm. got some good play. We had like a number two record in Miami, Florida, and somewhere mm -hmm. in Connecticut and Utah, and just you know. Just spotty stuff, yeah. but they didn't really get off their right. tail. You know, they did. They were in the commercial record business for about a year. We had two releases on Hanna Barbera, uh, a group called the Five Americans out of Dallas. They had a country band, a rock and roll band, and a Scottish. They called them skipple groups, which were basically yeah, Scotland's yeah. version of country music. Yeah, sure. And they had those three acts were yeah, on Donegan and that, those guys. Uh, yeah, Lonnie Donegan and. Uh, yeah. uh, Almost beer songs and stuff. They're yeah. And so those were the three acts that they had on on records, you know. And then they decided they were going to just stick with the kids stuff. And Flintstones and yeah, and, oh yeah, and the, the Saturday and morning cartoons and all that. Stuff. You remember those, right, Dan? <laughs> I do remember those. <laughs> the Hanna Barbera. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Well, let's. What do you say we give it a listen? All right. I'm bragging about it here. I haven't heard it in a while. Let's be good. Here's the ribbon. My years in prison caused her such pain, broke her full heart, ruined our name, wrote in my letter, they freed me today, get my dog. By the station there stands A big tall oak tree Hang there a white ribbon If you still care for me If I see the white ribbon To your arms I will fly If 
if I see no white ribbon, I'll pass right on by. Will I see the white ribbon telling me she is there? Or will I see a tree standing bare? Will I want to live? Or will I want to die? Will I see the white ribbon when the train draws nigh? Wheels are driving, bringing me back. While my heart is beating, every foot of the track. Will my darling still love me? Will my darling still care? Oh, please let the ribbon, white ribbon, be there. Down the track, and what do I see? My eyes are straining. There's a tree, it's covered with ribbon, all pretty and bright. Oh, be ribbon, and all of them white. It's covered with ribbons, all pretty and bright, lovely ribbons, and all of them white, and all of them white, and all of them white. George Chambers, KCWM, The Ribbon, and... Uh, Man, Georgia was originally done, uh, what year, 65? Well, we recorded 65, was released March 6th. It's, a, it's, a, it's very strange because to put it on the label, you know, released March 6th, 1966. That's an easy date to remember. Yes, yeah, the date the Alamo fell. Exactly. <laughs> and it's also uh, Bob oh. Wills was born on March 6th. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wills was born on uh, March 6, 1906, which was uh, 100 and whatever number of years that was. After. Yeah, was no, six, not even 100. Anything. It was 107 years ago. Yeah. yeah, 80 years, I guess, after the fall of the Alamo. But uh, anyway, so yeah, March 6th. And uh, that's, as I said, kind of an easy date to remember. Oh, I love that song. And, well, thank uh, you. That's a, yeah, that, I think that's a good song. It really gets, you know. It builds up to the end, and you just, you're in suspense, 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 and yeah. then uh, it's. Not just one ribbon, but covered in ribbons. Yeah, I thought it was put together better than uh, than Tie Yellow Ribbon. You know, well, uh, Tie Yellow Ribbon was a really successful song, and you can't hardly knock somebody for having success. But uh, you know, uh, just the uh, the continuity of the two songs uh, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. are to me the the original ribbon, the song that we did or that Jim wrote. You know. Uh, was a little better put together story. Well, and you, the you, story that you know the the way that the story went down. Yeah, it's very uh, paints a, paints a, an audio picture and a, yeah, a great job of that. And you get that sense that you're riding on a train. It's uh, yeah, it's, the beat goes on. It just it's an awesome. The, the original version is a little bit different than that, but it's pretty much you know we used a lot of the same stuff in it except the original version has the background singers i wasn't around when you did the original version i was, yeah, I was that probably was... in kindergarten then yeah <laughs> <laughs> not quite i must but... have not been born yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um and what probably and probably wasn't even born then That's yet. Right. uh let's see we're gonna play uh well, we're going to play some more music, and uh, we we got the uh, the full CD, The Journey Continues, and we're just kind of talking a little bit about the journey and kind of taking a trip down memory lane with George Chambers and uh, without the country gentleman. You uh, hardly ever see you uh, back in the old days without the gentleman, but now you're, you're, you're playing a lot to, by yourself. Let's talk about where, you're, where you are these days. And with, uh, I'm going to tell you what, we've we got to talk about one of the guy, one of the players before we move on, talking right. about the band, my buddy Jerry Blanton. 
He's, uh, yeah, yeah, there's he, a lot to talk about there, isn't I there? I told him that we're going to talk about him today, and yeah. he needed to send you a big check. <laughs> <laughs> good idea. He's a great writer himself. Oh, he's a good songwriter, you yeah. know. We did uh, Lady I'm Calling from Houston, or yeah. Jerry wrote. And yeah, we'll he, play that. Uh, my favorite thing that he wrote is a, a tune that he doesn't like very much, but the record... We did it in two takes, and he wasn't even there when we recorded it, and he and somebody else wrote a song. We call, he called it the Mr. M Blues. Yeah. Because it was, you know, the Mr. M Ice House. And it yeah. changed it back. There was a line in there. So it got them down and out and busted, starving, lazy, my belly is rusted. Yeah. Guitar Boogie Blues. So I changed the name of it to Guitar Boogie Blues, you know, to kind of fit, you know, the yeah. times. Yeah. But it feels really, really good. Hank Harrison, you know, uh, that. Uh, at the uh, SAC radio station played it the other day and I hadn't listened to it in a long time yeah. I was driving down the road and, yeah. and I thought wow I like that record you know and it's a corny song you know it's about an old picker just down and out and wants yeah. the old lady to go out and make some money and you know yeah. it's kind of you know the same old story but Blanton's your uh, st- played steel guitar for you steel guitar Many plays years. lead guitar plays dobro it started out you said on the guitar yeah he was a guitar player okay. and uh <laughs> The funny thing, the first Blanton steel guitar. One of my brothers had wanted to play steel guitar, so he bought a little lap steel, Alamo. Alamo laps, it was yeah. Alamo. Yeah. You know, they used to make them in San Antonio, Alamo yeah. guitars. Right. And his six string lap steel. So Jerry got that steel, he'd just been sitting around the house, and went over to the shop at, at uh, John Marshall, who knew the ag teacher real well. So he let Jerry use the shop, you know, on the weekends in there. So Jerry's making all this stuff and hooking these strings up and the pedals and all that stuff on the deal. And uh, I was going to school up at uh, Southwest Texas at San Marcos at the time, and he got it all put together on a Sunday evening, and I was waiting to go back to school, but I wanted to wait to see if the steel guitar was going to work. <laughs> so we got on the front porch of the house and tuned everything and hit a chord and started a song he punched the pedals down and the whole bottom fell out <laughs> all over the porch <laughs> and we laughed about that for hours you know back to the drawing board you know? <laughs> well he is a master craftsman and uh, oh he's a, a beautiful yeah. instrument and yeah. uh, i yeah. saw some i was doing some stuff with him in the studio not long ago and he was showing me uh, some pictures. I'd seen some pictures of his home that he built out in West Texas, yeah, out in the La Jita. He's there. building another one out there. Oh, it's, it's man. Blanton Construction Company. Yeah. He just does great work, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a great guy, yeah, too. Yeah, He's a lot yeah. of fun. You know, his steel's uh, ranked among the top three manufacturers in the country. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, all right, that's enough about Blanton. We said we were going to talk yeah, about him. he didn't pass enough. <laughs> you know? No. Uh, I'll tell you what uh, I wanted to do was ask you a little bit about uh, some of the places you're playing. Now we're going to kind of touch on that more as we start playing some cuts off of the new CD. But you got some regular gigs. Let's just kind of run by those. Well, the, you know, the business has changed so much, and it's hard to get enough money to take the band out. Yeah. You know, unless you play real loud and, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, wear your baseball cap and T-shirt and mm-hmm. with your shirt tail so, hanging and, out and do, you know, the the newer music. Yeah. And say so we don't, you know, we don't do much of that. There's some new songs that are really good songs, and I try to learn those, you know, to do them. But yeah. I've been doing singles and duos and trios, a lot of convention stuff. Yeah. You know, because you can take an upright bass, a fiddle, and guitar, put on your cowboy hat and a bandana. And, uh, you know, your atmosphere mostly, but, you know, those people come and they request. And and we never get a request for a new song. (laughs) They always want to hear, you know, they want to hear the older -hmm. older stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been doing a bunch of singles like over at uh, Grady's. Which uh, on Mandir Road, which is the old Texas Star Inn dance hall. Mm -hmm. In fact, I ran into one of the sons of the guy that used to own that thing yesterday. Wow. You know, Frank Klein owned it. All his kids went to to school with all his kids because they just lived down the road from the high school there. Yeah. And uh, played that place many, many times, you know. So I've been doing a single out there for, I'll say it's a single. Sometimes it's me. (laughs) Sometimes it's me and Jerry and Bert and whoever comes out there. You know, it's a place to go play. It's a nice early gig. It's 6.30 to 8.30, so you're home at 9 o'clock. Does that still have a little bit of the old Texas star in atmosphere? Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't do much. Of what well, Grady's, I'll have to give them credit. They took the walls and put that rough cedar on the walls inside. Mm-hmm. 
uh, the sign is still on the building out front. Yeah, with the backwards mm-hmm. map on it. Yeah, and you go, it's depending on which direction you're going. Texas yeah. is backwards on one side. Yeah, and um, you know it's it's still pretty much the same building. Yeah, you know they they didn't do much to it. it uh, now you're playing down on the river walk with uh, a girl that plays the fiddle. Yeah, with R.J. Smith down at the Republic of Texas. You know, and that's her gig. I just kind of stand around. I don't sing down there. That's somebody just requests something that that I know. You know, but most of the time I'm just a guitar player and the observer. You know. Yeah. So just you and R.J. down there. Yeah. On Sunday, every Sunday, right? Yeah. And, and uh, every Sunday, the weather doesn't get us, or she's not out of town. So what I, time? What time of the evening is that? Six to eight. Okay. We're going to talk more about that as we play some of the cuts. Uh, from the new CD, the journey continues. We're just uh, starting off talking about the maybe the older part of the journey, and then we'll talk more about uh, some of the current things that are going on. But I want to play uh, this song, Lady, I'm Calling from Houston, and Jerry Blanton wrote this. Yeah, Jerry wrote that song. Uh, he'll have to send us another check. I get, get requests for that thing, <laughs> too. It's really strange, the songs you get requests for, and... Uh, you didn't think you know anybody heard it. <laughs> Let's give it a spin. Out there. Lady, I'm calling from Houston. I've been thinking about you all day. I'm calling to say it's over. Honey, we just can't go on this way. I guess it's the way that you kissed me. At the airport last night in the rain And this hurt that's tagged along with me Turn my head around to call you today I'm calling to say it's over The long, lonely night you spent alone You kissed me goodbye There's George Chambers and Lady I'm Calling from Houston. That's a Jerry Blanton uh, styled song right there. And uh, Blanton is, uh, I was saying, he's a uh, he's, he's good friend, and I, you know, pick on him a little bit when I get a chance, which is often. Yeah, well, he, he needs it. He's not around to take care of him, you know, pick up slack for himself. So we. Uh, yeah, we can pick on him because he's a good Yeah, can't, <laughs> he can't defend himself, but he's a master uh, craftsman, builds one of the top flight uh, steel guitars in the world and a uh, heck of a carpenter and uh, architect and all that and oh, and, uh, and a song uh, song stylist also once a yeah. great song oh yeah lady i'm calling from houston what year was that good gosh i don't have a clue it was after the uh ding dong howdy it was in the 70s yeah sometime you know yeah. I don't, you know, have exact... That was good times. Uh, that was good times to be uh, playing country music because, uh, you know, KKYX, you were talking about oh, those yeah, in the did. old days with Max Gardner and that, and then uh, over at K-Buck also, and, uh, man, there was, some, there was some good country radio around back in those yeah. days. It was great to get played on those stations. Uh, talk about a little bit about some of the other uh, guys who were going up and down the road back in those days. I know you're a great friend of mine also, Bubba Literal. 
Oh, yeah. My Bubba, one of my favorite singers. Yeah, I remember when uh, Bubba was a little older than than I am, you know, he, uh, I don't know, two or three years, you know, he already had a band. And, yeah. And I was in Earl Abel's restaurant one night. Yeah. And Bubba was in there. And I, boy, I was in awe. There's a star yeah. Bubba sure. Wow, yeah. you know, and that was way back yeah. in the in the last century, you know. But he was, uh, you know, I played on, on all but a few of his records, played really guitar on things. And he was a good singer, just a good guy. Yeah, you know, I don't person. really like Bubba. Makes me uh, get to thinking about it because you talk about, uh, you know, those days when he already had his band and he was a star and all of that, and you were working with him. So uh, I know he was closely connected with Leon Payne, and Bubba told me some great stories about uh, really Leon kind of got him jump started in the country music business back at the old Melody Ranch. Back yeah, the they worked. <laughs> <laughs> out there, so we uh, we were playing a place called the High Ho Corral. Sure, the, man. The old High Ho Theater was it's outside. And, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And you know, to, you know, the expressways weren't near what they are today. And so you had to go the same route. Bubba had to go the same route to get to Melody Ranch because it was right by the <coughs> High Ho Corral. It was just down the street. There. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, We'd pass him once in a while, him and Leon. Both yeah. had a great big old Lincoln. You know, yeah. and of course. <laughs> and they, they they were driving along. But uh, he played that thing for, boy, I don't know how many years. You know, long time. But I know yeah. that uh, for many years he uh, uh, had the pleasure. A long time ago, we had talked about uh, SAC, San Antonio College, and the yeah. radio department there. And I had the pleasure, the pleasure of interviewing Bubba on SAC, uh, KSYM, a long, yeah. long time ago. And uh, he told some great stories. One of them was that he would pick Leon up because Leon was blind. And he would pick him up and drive him out to the uh, Melody Ranch. And Bubba would front the band. And that when Leon decided that it was time to maybe stop getting on the bandstand he uh, passed the band really along to Bubba and they changed the name from the Melody Ranch Hands to the Melody Mustangs yeah so it's one of my favorite old Bubba literal stories but yeah well, Leon was a case boy he was uh, yeah <laughs> he was really a funny guy you know he uh we played in Robstown a place called the Ponderosa Club and they you know, they'd book a single act in there, and we'd go down and do the backup thing. Yeah. Or, and yeah. Leon was planted. And uh, he rode down there with us in the, in the car. We had an old Cadillac limo at the time. It was before we got our bus. And, and uh, it was a big, long car we bought from a funeral home for 200 bucks. <laughs> and it had the window between the seat, you know, black. <laughs> right. It was black, and it had George Chambers, a country gentleman, and gold letters on each door. <laughs> if you had flags on the front, it looked like an embassy car, you know. But anyway, I'm in the back seat with Leon, and we're just talking, you know, riding along with Jerry Berger in the front driving, and the window is up, you know, between the seats. And Leon says, where's the button for that window? And so uh, I told him, and he rolls it down, and he hollers at Jerry. He says, hey, Jerry, if you get tired, just I'll be glad to drive. I do my I do my best at night, and then he rolled the window up before Jerry could say anything. <laughs> oh, he, he was really interesting to talk to. He used to say that his big goal was to get a great big Rolls Royce and go around and pick up all the musicians in San Antonio that were playing and take them to the gig. And at one o'clock in the morning, come back and get them all and take them all home. <laughs> oh man, Leon Payne, boy, he was a legendary songwriter. Oh, good writer. He man. he did a good job on the bandstand. Too. Oh yeah, he was, he was uh, a great singer. Just, but you know, uh, right in the back of that old Cadillac was an icon, you know, because he yeah. he a lot of his hits. Oh, I didn't know anybody, you know, in the business. You yeah. know, and I got to ride and, and visit with Leon, and we solved all the problems of the world for a while there, you know. All right, I got a breakfast station here. It's KCWM Hondo 1460, and on the World Wide Web at KCWM.net. And it's uh, George Chambers here with us today, Mike Carr and Ann Lucas, and uh, got some more 
company here in the house with us, having a great time, uh, getting some. <laughs> I knew we were going to have fun and listen to some of these stories from yes, George. We are. <laughs> and as I said, a great history lesson from the old professor. We can yeah. <laughs> talk more about uh, maybe uh, some of the other aspects of George's career and stuff. Let's play. Uh, we're going to we're going to play all the cuts off of the new CD called "The Journey Continues." We're going to talk more about some other artists and things that George has crossed paths with over the years. But let's uh, get uh, hour two started off with this song right here. It's a bloody merry morning, baby. Let me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. Toward the runway with the smog and haze Reminding me of how I feel Just a country boy who's learning That the pitfalls of the city are extremely real All the nightlife and the parties And temptation and deceit The order of the day It's a bloody merry morning Cause I'm leaving baby somewhere in L.A. It's a bloody merry morning, baby, left me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. The morning sky And a voice comes through the speaker Reassuring us Flight 50 is the way to fly Then a hostess takes our order Coffee, tea or something stronger To start off the day It's a bloody merry morning Cause I'm leaving babies somewhere in L.A. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. It's a bloody merry morning, baby, let me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. And there's George Chambers, and I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. That's called Bloody Mary Morning. I think we have heard that song from uh, somebody else, haven't we, George? Oh, uh, yeah. You told me a great story about uh, about this. You saw, uh, that's a Willie Nelson song. Willie wrote it, and you recorded it. When was this recording? Well, the one you just played was recorded in uh, 1971. Okay. Willie had it in an album. Yeah, and uh, I was listening to that album, you know, and I said, "Joe, I'd like to cut Bloody Mary Morning." He said, "Well, you can cut anything I got." Yeah. <laughs> Other wow. Yeah. <laughs> Coming from a, the consummate songwriter that he yeah. is, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I said, "Wow, that's great." You know, I, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. So we went and did it, and uh, about five years in the mid '70s, sometimes he released it as a single. You know, because that about a redheaded stranger and all that stuff, and he was yeah. really on the, you know, yeah. on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. And so he did it as a single. It had a five string banjo playing in it. And it was, yeah. You know, I mean, that jet plane was really flying in that record. Yeah. And we were in Houston uh, playing the Pro Am show, the entertainment at night. We were doing the backup work mm-hmm. thing. That's the golf tournament? Yeah, yeah. at the uh, okay. Houston Open. Okay. And I was walking through the reception room. They were having a big cocktail hour in there with all the celebrities and the golfers and yeah. anybody that could sneak in there. You yeah, know. Sure. <laughs> and Willie was talking to some guys, and I, I saw him over there, you know, but I was just, I was on my way to set up, you know. I was yeah. just panicked, you know, get that thing set up so we're ready to go at 8 o'clock or whatever yeah, time. Yeah. And he, he, he's looking at this guy talking to him, and he reaches out and grabs my arm. And he says, hey. 
I covered you on your record. Wait a few years and cover me again. <laughs> so on the new album, uh, I called David Zettner. David was up at the ranch, you know, yeah. told him what I wanted yeah. to do. And he says, well, and I told him, I says, find out what key, because i got to do the music. So he says, okay. And he calls me back, and I forgot about it. You know, I was jacking around the studio, and and the uh, phone rings, and I never got a phone call out there. So it's false for you. I said, who in the world be calling me here? You know, I pick up the phone, it's David. Yeah. And he, he he didn't say hello or anything. He says, Willie says, two thumbs up in G. <laughs> <laughs> so... So uh, we're just running that song by again. You know, it's one of those songs that we just keep doing back and forth like this. So where did you record this song, this version of this? Uh, I recorded it at, uh, some of it at my house, in my studio. I recorded some of it at uh, BGM Studios in San Antonio. And uh, some at Willie's, uh, Willie Nelson World Headquarters at Luck. On the uh, Pertinalis River there, huh? Yeah. All right, well, let's give it a listen. You want to? Bloody Mary Morning. It's a Bloody Mary Morning, baby. Left me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. Taxi toward the runway with the smog and haze reminding me of how I feel. Just a country boy who's learning that the pitfalls of the city are extremely real. All the nightlife and the parties and temptation and deceit, the order of the day. It's a bloody merry morning because I'm leaving baby somewhere in L.A. It's a bloody merry morning, baby left me without warning sometime in the night. With forgetting her the nature of my flight Our golden jet is airborne Flight 50 cuts a path across the morning sky voice comes through the speaker reassuring us fly 50 is the way to fly and our hostess takes our order coffee tea or something stronger to start off the day it's a bloody merry morning and i'm leaving baby somewhere in l.a it's a bloody merry morning baby left me without warning sometime Getting her the nature of my flight. It's a bloody merry morning, baby. Left me without warning sometime in the night. So I'm flying down to Houston with forgetting her the nature of my flight. It doesn't get any sweeter than that right there. I love that. Bloody Merry Morning, Willie Nelson wrote it, and George Chambers recorded it, and then Willie recorded it, and then George recorded it again with Willie. (laughs) Willie recorded it first, and I've forgotten what album it's in. Oh, okay. But it's in an album. He did it, you did it, he did it, you did it. It's his turn again, huh? That's one of those, uh, yeah, it's his turn. We'll call him up and say, it's it's your turn again. (laughs) Um, Let's talk a little bit about Willie. How did you meet Willie Nelson? We were playing the Cabaret Club in 1961 or two or three. Mr. Record Man was out. You know, it was one of his first records. 
He'd already gone out of the radio business, but he was oh, yeah, by then he was living in Nashville then. Yeah. You know? But he was disc jockey at uh, KBOP in yeah. Pleasant. That was in, in 54, 55. Tell you a quick, yeah. really great story when Willie left the radio station there. Back in the old days in the radio business, you uh, had to have you know your license uh, that you hung on the wall if you were one of the operators, one of the disc jockeys, or one of the engineers, and you had your license from the Federal Communications Commission hanging on the wall. When you would leave and uh, go to another job, on the back of your license, it had uh, the information on there, the date that you had started at that radio station and the date that you left, and it was signed by either the chief engineer or the general manager or the owner of the radio station. Doc Parker, who owned uh, KBOP back yeah. in those days forever in Pleasanton, one of the legendary old country radio stations. Well, Willie Nelson left there. He's working there as a disc jockey. Decided to leave, go to Nashville, and uh, and try his hand as a songwriter. And Doc Parker said, well, Willie, bring me your license, and I'll sign it for you. And he said, no, Doc. He said, I'm just going to leave it hanging on the wall. He said, I don't need it anymore. He said, I'm not going to work in the radio business anymore. I'm going to make it as a songwriter. And that, his license hung on the wall. It's, it's still in the museum over there at the I'll Cowboy Vendor. Museum. Yeah. I'll be That's great. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, you know, they talk about, you know, if, if you want to be a success at what, what it is that you're trying to accomplish, many times you have to burn bridges and, and put the past behind you and yeah. keep focused on the future. It's exactly what he did. Well, he went to Nashville to be a songwriter. And he, yeah, there's a little bit of success there. He did some commercials. That were on XEG and XERF, you know, yeah. big stations. Yeah, the Border Blasters. Yeah, yeah. for a, you know, get your song professionally done. Uh -oh. Johnny yeah. Bush brought a copy. He says, "Make a copy of this for yeah. me." Can bring it down and I put it on CD for him, and I kept a copy of it. Wow. Really, it's about five minutes long. Send wow. it in, ten dollars, and we'll do a demo of your song and blah blah blah. blah. Wow. All this stuff, you know. Yeah. And most people don't, you know. Today, nobody has a clue how those stations worked. You know, the, I cut the, into your deal there. So how did you meet Willie, and where did it go from there? Well, uh, and when we worked with him at the Cabaret Club, and we knew we were going to get, you know, usually we didn't know who we were going to get, you know, because yeah. they had a star every Saturday night, and we worked once a month at the Cabaret from '58 to '68, I guess, ten years till Ralph Mitchell sold it, and. Uh, you know, Willie Nelson, we'd been listening to some of his records, and Bert was all excited because he liked what he was doing, you know, and the way he played guitar and all this stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. going to work with Willie Nelson. And uh, we, you know, got there, and we set up, and we did our thing, and then here comes Willie. He comes on with Columbus Stockade Blues, Willie Nelson style, and he had Shirley, his wife, playing bass with him, which was a really good thing. And we found out about mm -hmm. in 30 seconds, you don't listen to him sing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, but he was such a, just a nice guy, you know, putting up with our antics and this and that and the yeah. other, you know, and yeah. just uh, here we were stumbling around trying to keep up with him. And we kept running into him. Shady Acres, he had to work with us. I told him, I said, you must be the most unluckiest guy in the business. <laughs> <laughs> and he finally, got, finally said, to him, you know, he said, you know what? And Bush was uh, involved with him then, too, and he said, why don't y'all come, you know, we're down here, come do the dance sets, because people keep complaining they can't dance to my music, and uh, we'll do our thing. You know, so he would, he'd call me once in a while from Nashville and say, we've got all these dates down there in South Texas, how many of them can you do with us, you know, X number of dates, you know. So we'd go out and play our thing, and then Willie'd come on and do his deal, and we'd go back on and do a thing, and then he'd come back on. And, and do, we did lots of lots of those dates like that. We used to work on Wednesday nights with him at the Winchester Club in Houston. I'd get out of school, get on a bus, and we'd go to Houston and play that thing. I'd back in a bus, come back down here, and get up and go teach <laughs> the next wow. day. Let's talk about teaching. When did you uh, when did you start teaching? And I, uh, you know, I, I, I see people all the time still, and always will that were students of yours, and I could, I could rattle off some names, and you could tell me were they good students or were they, you know, less than She's less like, than terrible. Good. I figure I went through about 6,000 kids. You know, just, uh, me. You started teaching what year? Uh, 62. Okay. And your, uh, your chosen field was? 
Well, my degree was in vocational agriculture, but I decided I'd teach science because ag was a 12-month deal, you know, and I wanted yeah. the summers off so I could yeah. go play. Sure. You know, because I didn't let the teaching interfere with my music, I'll guarantee you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't paying me enough to te- yeah. you know, put up with that. But, yeah, I, I taught some, you know, for the most part, really, really neat people. And, and all, all these years at the same school? Yeah, I taught biology and I taught advanced science and I taught microbiology and and uh, general science. At which high school was this? I taught at Southwest for three years. Okay. I taught at Holmes for 22 years. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. And I taught at Zachary Middle School for six. Okay. And I uh, taught uh, sixth graders at Zachary, you know, six, seven, eight. Grade That's grade a little more fun probably, huh? Oh, they were fun, yeah. yeah. They were, yeah, you could really push those kids because they hadn't gotten cynical yet, you know, yeah. and figured yeah. out all the mm-hmm. things. Sure. They were on their way, you know, and I'd catch them doing something. How'd you know what's going on? I said, boy, <laughs> when I was in school, I spent more time in the principal's office than the principal did. <laughs> so that and that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that was on a first name basis with the principal. What, 31 years teaching? Is that uh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. And you retired. When did you retire? 93. Been playing music. Well, I didn't retire. I just quit. I quit teaching and went into music business full time so I could, yeah. you know. I can start to death you know, <laughs> in a better, uh, better style. Yeah. How, uh, how'd that work out back during the days when you when you were teaching? Uh, because obviously there's some demands on your time during the week. I guess your was your music more or less limited to weekends back in those days. Oh no, we'd work any not work any That's night. What we I were working. There's those Wednesday nights, you know. Yeah. And I just had you know work around it and do whatever we needed to do. Yeah. yeah. After you teach for a little while, you get kind of got things in line, so you're not you're prep is a little different. You have to update it, you know, because uh, when I first started teaching, the National Science Foundation was paying books, tuition, and mileage to go to school uh, on Saturday mornings in your teaching field. And you got, you know, graduate, undergraduate, or credit you wanted, however much effort you wanted to put into yeah. it. And I picked up 24 hours of science at the expense of Uncle... I got my, some of my tax money back at yeah, Incarnate yeah. Word. And, yeah. and, well, I mean, they, you know, it's all in the teaching field. Yeah. So that was really a good thing. I got enough hours to have a master's degree plus, but all I did, what I did, I took uh, subjects that would give me a little better ability to try to do what I was doing rather than, uh, you know, school administration or a master's degree in education, you know, well, that's about as worthless degree as you can get as far as I'm concerned, you know. And today they should pay teachers that, that you know, are really into it and they're getting stuff in their field. They should be paid on the basis of hours over their degree in their teaching field. Mm-hmm. If you get a master's in education, you get X amount of dollars over. If you get them in, in your teaching field and you're teaching then you get X more dollars than this guy over here has got a master's right. degree in it. And, you know, and that's that's the way it it ought to be done. But they didn't come ask me. Well, <laughs> I got to say, George, that uh, of course uh, a lot of folks, of course, knew or do know that uh, you had a career as a school teacher and a, a joint career as a musician. And but a lot of people know you more as a musician than anything else. But I'll tell you. Uh, I do know a lot of your students, and uh, I take my hat off to you for all the years that you've worked with these young people because uh, teachers are some of the greatest people in this country, and uh, you, of course, are one of those. And aside from being a good friend, uh, I have a great deal of respect for you for that well, chosen thank career. you very much. I appreciate that. But, you know, uh, 99% of my students were really Deep people, yeah. You know, some of them, you know, were kind of like I was when I was in school. That's how I knew what to do. With <laughs> and I taught some. You know, I taught Steve Earle. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I know that's one yeah. of the. Somebody asked me the other day. I said, "Did, did uh, George Chambers teach Steve Earle?" I said, "Yeah, he did." And I, I taught, taught him much, but yeah. And uh, John Cornyn yeah. was was in my uh, biology class. Wow. Well, as I said, a lot of people that uh, you're kind of like Midas touch, you know, people rub up against George Chambers. 
A lot of people have gotten successful. A lot of them have left the music business because of you. Yeah, and some of them are in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot of people. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> Probably, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, millions of people that you have touched with your music over the many years of your musical career, which is still going strong. Let's get on to the music of the uh, new CD. It's called The Journey Continues. And we're going to play cut number two. What do we have uh, lined up here? Oh, we have I've Got a Yearning. Now, this is a Merle, Merle Haggard, Haggard song. Yeah. yeah, Merle Haggard wrote this tune. It, you know, we've been doing this song for years and years and years, and it's a dance floor filler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you play this tune, it's that right tempo, the right feel, or whatever, and we had the harmonies and all that stuff on it. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether it was ever a big hit for Merle or not, but you know, we've been doing it, I don't know how many years, and uh, we get requests for it, and we play, play dances, you know, that's... Uh, I'm glad you put it on the uh, new CD. From the CD, the journey continues with George Chambers and Mike Carr and Ann Lucas. Let's give it a listen. I've got a yearning to hold you tight, a burning desire I live with day and night. Tight. Boy, it's an old Merle Haggard song done up by George Chambers and uh, George's uh, new CD, The Journey Continues. And we're going to play, we're just going right through the list here, George, and we're going to play a Shel Silverstein song here in a moment. And he's another one of those great writers. Yeah. You've got, you got a pretty good list of songwriters uh, material on here, but I want to ask you about Chance. The Journey Continues, Americana Country is the name of the uh, CD with George Chambers and the country gentleman, and prominently featured on the front cover of the CD. There's a 
fine looking boy who's very close to your heart. What's his name? Chance. Uh, Chance the Basenji. <laughs> uh, that's is that he's uh, one of those African type dogs. Yeah, and, yeah they're one an ancient about. breed, evidently. I don't know much about them, you know. Uh that's the one from the movies, right? The uh what is the movie the that uh, no, that's the Lion thing. King wasn't. It that could have been. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if they ever saw the Lion King or not. But they're energetic dogs, aren't oh, they? Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's just really full. He's five years old. Well, he's driving well, the bus, which oh, yeah. you know, is probably he, a good thing. He's a, a chauffeur, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, was, that picture was just a big accident. You yeah. Know? When I got all the pictures back, they gave them to me on on a CD ROM. You know, so you could look at them and see which yeah. ones we yeah. wanted to use. <laughs> I saw that picture. I made a big eight by ten of it. And I just kept looking at that thing, and I thought, man, this has to go on the front of the album today. I look so bad, you know, I don't need to be there and scare everybody. <laughs> and, uh, the chance is uh, sitting in the driver's seat, right by the steering wheel on the bus, and looking, kind of looking back at the uh, at the boy. It says, "Load up." Yeah, <laughs> on Load up. We're going, boys. Let's go. All right. So, uh, I want to ask you. Uh, for one thing that I uh, haven't asked you yet, and uh, I'll ask you if, if I'm, I'm supposed to ask you this, so hopefully I'll remember to do that again. Um, somebody wants to get some of your CDs, the old or the new. Where are they available? How do they get in touch with you? Well, I really haven't done much about that. I'm trying to put it on CD Baby and, okay. uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, CD Text or BGM. You know, they're both the same, basically the same kind of services. Uh, and I haven't approached any, you know, selling Selling records nowadays is so much product out there. But there's a couple of CD shops in San Antonio that carry regional and, and local stuff, and so I've got to get with those people. And I don't know all of their names yet, so okay. I was kind of waiting until the Christmas thing got out of the way and New Year's, and, uh, you know, and uh, to get. That particular aspect, you know, otherwise I'm yeah. selling off the bandstand. Yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's, we'll talk it's, more about that. Let's get some of the music going because uh, right. I don't want to run out of time here. We're going to be playing all the tracks off the here this morning. Here's a Shel Silverstein song called Jennifer Deep Johnson. Deep in the pocket of an old sport coat jacket, chance to discover an old memory. Three, four, quarter, eight, black and white. Taking up Jennifer Johnson and me I'm in the corner with my shirt collar open Like some Latin lover on late night TV Smiling right there with her head on my shoulder It's Jennifer Johnson and she's looking at me Must have been summer 1967 Beatles were singing Love is all you need I held her hand As we walked through the arcade Two young believers On a three dollar spree Three, four, quarter A black and white portrait Ten close the curtain So no one can see Kiss me quick, cause the red light is flashing, flashing on Jennifer Johnson at me. Waiting on that late night train back to home, I felt the warmth in the cool. Johnson, did you see? 
George Chambers and uh, Jennifer Johnson and me. You're listening to KCWM Hondo 1460 and on the World Wide Web. We broadcast at KCWM.net, your Texas station from the border of the nation. We'll get back to uh, some more of the music from the Journey Continues CD with George Chambers. But I want to ask you a couple of uh, guys that I want to ask you about. Uh, and uh, we're kind of trying to fly through here a little bit so we can get all the music on. But if you would, tell us quickly about Sam Kendrick. He's a longtime friend, right? Yeah, really a longtime friend. <laughs> you know, he's a good writer. He, oh, right. you know, I, I, I knew him when he was at the Express News. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I'd see him here and there, but he did a bunch of articles on us way back when he was at the Express News. I remember going he's down. very helpful in your career. But he has been. He's oh. been a real, real prince, you know. A huge uh, following. And, you know, and... It'd go, I'd go five or six or eight years and never see him. I'd run into him somewhere, and I ran into him at a birthday party here about two months ago. And he'd just done the article on Ron Knuth yeah. in his paper. And he said, oh, I will come to an article on you. And I thought, well, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. but people say that. But Sam's true to his word. Yeah. He called me about two weeks later and says, we need to get together. And we sat around for about four hours. Wow. Talking, wow. just telling the stuff, the stories back and forth. He's got a great article in the December edition of Action Magazine, so yeah. everybody pick up a copy of that. And I, you know, he did a beautiful job on that thing. He, he, he told those lies just like I told them to. <laughs> <laughs> he stressed a few of them, but that's okay. You know? <laughs> I want to ask you about another uh, great uh, friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, and a mutual friend of yours, uh, a guy who's also... Uh, Kind of an icon in this in the country music business here in South Texas. How about Arky Blue? Arky, oh, I've known Arky for years. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen him in a long, long time. Yeah, you know, he's still running. I guess he's still running the oh, yeah. Silver mm-hmm. Dollar. Sure. Sure is. But uh, Arky, gosh, I met Arky in 1957. I think we were playing at yeah. the old. Uh, Silver Spur in Bandera that's up mm-hmm. on the hill there. You know, it's still there, but it's mm-hmm. it's not a club. Somebody was going to make an event center out of it, but I don't know whether that had ever happened or not. That was just recently. But uh, we were playing up there with Charlie Walker, and Arky comes in there, you know, and, and I got him sang a few songs that he'd written. You know, he wrote a song I always thought should have been a hit for somebody called "A Queen of Broken Hearts." Yeah. Yeah, it's a real straight ahead country. Sorry, I've got an original demo tape he gave me of, of a bunch of his stuff. You know. Yeah, we play uh, occasionally. We played in Arky's uh, with my little old band, and the uh, first time we played in there, everybody that uh, that I know around here that has bands, they all ask me, "Man, how'd you get into Arky's? That's uh, you know, that's quite a coup there." And uh, I said, well, you, you know, you got to be buddies with Arky to begin <laughs> with. you got to play old country music because that's all it's about there. Well, but but someone it. asked me, they said, would you, if you had your choice of places you could play, would you rather play Gillies or would you rather play Billy Bob's? I said, I'd rather play Arky's. Yeah. That's as real as it gets right yeah, there. Yeah, boy, it, it is. It really is. And it's yeah. one of the few of them left. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, they're great people. They're wonderful friends. And, uh, boy, they yeah. got to got a great place there and we're gonna play number uh, four what song we got that's he went to paris by jimmy buffett ah, here it is. he went to paris searching for answers questions that bothered him so he was impressive young and aggressive Saving the world on his own. Warm summer breezes, French wines and cheeses, put his ambitions at bay. Summers and winters, scattered like splinters, four or five years slipped away. He went to England, played the piano, married an actress named Kim. 
They had a fine life. She was a good wife for him, a young son named Jim. All of the answers, all the questions, locked in his attic one day. They had a good life, clean country living. Twenty more years slipped away. War took his baby, bombs killed his lady, left him with only one eye. But it was battered, whole world was shattered. All he could do was just cry. Tears were falling, he was recalling answers that he never found. So he jumped on a freighter, skidded the ocean, left England without a sound. Fishes of islands, drinks his green label each day. Writing his memoirs, losing his hearing, but he don't care what most people say. Through 86 years of perpetual motion, if he likes you, he'll smile and he'll say, Some of it's magic, some of it's tragic, but I had a good life all the way. He went to Paris, searching for answers to questions that bothered him so. That is called He Went to Paris, and uh, and who wrote that? Jimmy Buffett. Huh? Jimmy really? Buffett. That's really? right. Yeah, that's in. It's George, what are you doing to Jimmy Buffett's music, man? Oh, I do a lot of <laughs> great filling station hold up. Oh, yeah. But my favorite uh, Jimmy Buffett song is uh, a song called The uh, Peanut Butter Conspiracy. <laughs> and He's it, kind of a twisted song. Dig right it right. out. Oh, it's a great song because it's about a bunch of pickers <laughs> and their survival techniques. All right, <laughs> let's move on. What do we got coming up here next, Dan? Oh, is, uh, we have Love the Word I Never Throw Around. Written by whom? Written by Robert O. King Jr. All right, here it is.
time out in the woods Counting stars and sleeping all alone I can't say for certain that it'll do me any good I might grew accustomed to being on my own Love's a word I never go around When I say I love you till the end And give me the name of that song again there. Oh, Love the Word I Never Throw Around. And Robert Earl Keene wrote that. And uh, that's uh, that's another good one, George. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, kind you. of flying through here. Uh, we got one coming. I was asking you who was singing the harmonies, the high harmonies on that. You said Michael Wade. And we're going to play a song that he wrote. That's the old cowboy, huh? Yeah. There are a lot of those around, aren't there? Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, give that a listen, and uh, then we'll come back and kind of talk about it a little bit. That's the old cowboy. Here's George Chambers. Went to the corner, and I asked for the way. Stranger. For the dance All of a sudden Out in the street Pitchforks and hailstones Come hurting at me So pack it away Call it a day This dusty old cowboy's Heading home for the day Like the stars in the night I reached out to touch her And sing her a song In one silent moment She smiled and she's gone So pack it away Call it a day This dusty old cowboy's heading home It's uh, Anne, bring me back. Cowboy. Yeah, bring me back up speed here. Where were we? Did, did we get to Paris? Okay. Dusty we're Old Cowboy. Dusty Old Cowboy. All right. Ron Knuth's got some songs that uh, he wrote that is, is on the uh, CD, and we're going to be playing some of those. 
And we had a chance to uh, visit with George uh, off the air a little bit. I said, you know, we're liable to run out of time here. Can you stick around a little later? And he said, yeah. So we're going to play all these cuts. We're going to talk about some other people that you're working with and some people that you have uh, – that you think a lot of, and I know you've been a, a huge help to many people over the years and their careers in music, and, uh, you know, maybe people don't think about that so much, but you've been a great influence on many of the artists and uh, also a great friend to many of them, and I, uh, there's never been a time that uh, that uh, anybody in the country music business uh, has called on George and, didn't, and you didn't offer them a helping hand, and I take oh, my hat off to you for that, that also. Good. I know one of the guys that I wanted to mention here uh, this morning, there's a dear friend of mine, and I know he's a dear friend of yours also, and uh, he passed away a few years back. He had cancer and died, our buddy Keith Adams. And, uh, Keith oh, was yeah. A great guy. Keith is a good singer. Yeah. Uh, boy, I'd forgotten all about Keith. Yeah. You know, I'd not forgotten about him. You know, but yeah. I hadn't thought about yeah. him in years. Yeah. You know, he was a good talent. He was a real good friend. Uh, yeah, of mine. He and I. A lot, a lot of times, you'd see Mike Card, you'd see Keith Adams, and vice yeah. versa. And I know many times you looked off the bandstand and saw us out there at George Chambers dances because we followed you all over South Texas. But I know he's one of the guys, and he always said, you know, George has done a lot for me. He's helped me a lot. <laughs> and. Uh, I appreciate you know. that. You know. Well, that's what you're in business for, is to help each other. You know? Sure. Let's, Let's go back over here and uh, ask Ann. Uh, she's kind of keeping me in line she, here. She's in charge over here. Yeah, she's the one that's picking she's got the music. Whip, you know, we're career. Gonna, we're going to listen to Where Have You Been All My Life. All right. And uh, Ron Knuth wrote this. Uh, Ron Knuth just played the guitar. never gave one to me And I've never known your touch That's not how I want it to be Don't be surprised If I seem to act like you're already mine For I have seen the future And it's getting brighter Where have you been all my life? the gate open, you won't have to beg me to stay. We can put on some old records as long as it's not the blues and dance the night away. For I've never known your smile, you never gave one to me, and I have never known your touch, that's not how. I want it to be Don't be surprised If I seem to act like you're already mine For I have seen the future And it's getting brighter Where have you been all my life? The journey continues as the uh, CD, Americana Country, George Chambers and the Country Gentleman featuring Chance driving the bus, uh, <laughs> Chance the dog. He's a fine-looking boy. And, uh, man, I like that song, George. Where have you been all my life? Ron Knuth Ron wrote, Knuth that, wrote huh? that. Ron you say, sings it on a bandstand. You know, we do it. You know, I don't sing it. No, I, mean, I just always wanted to record it, and I got the opportunity, and so I did. And who's that picking those uh, fancy guitar licks on? Well, Ron. 
Yeah. Ron's doing that, and, and Bert's doing some of the fills yeah. in the verses. Yeah. But Ron played the, the lead, you know, the sweet, guitar break. Sweet you know, sound. And it. it blended real well with the piano. Bill Green played piano on most of this stuff that where the piano is. That's another guy has been hanging around a long time. Isn't yeah. It? And Bill plays really good rhythm piano. Yeah. You know, he's always busting off. He can play the stupid yeah. piano. Yeah. You know? And on one of the cuts on this album, on uh, I think it's the last cut, when we originally cut it, it didn't have piano on it. And so I went over to the studio. I made a little CD of a rough mix and uh, had him play piano and put it on a CD, just the track, the piano tracks uh-huh. in stereo. Yeah. So I took it back to the studio at home and put it in the computer and put the recorder over here and put the piano on the the record, I, I managed to get it timed perfectly the first time, and, wow. and wow. just played that CD, and it was like he was playing along. Great. Played the piano, didn't in the record. You can't hear the piano very well because it's one of those things where it's blended in there. Yeah. But if you took it out, you'd see this big old hole in yeah. there. You know? yeah. Yeah. It, it fit perfectly. You know? the, uh, yeah, we're talking about the uh, computers and all that stuff and digital recording and everything. Well, it's a world of difference compared to what it was when you first started out. A back. lot of convenience, yeah. You know, it used to cut and splice and this and that and the other. Yeah. And yeah. As a, as the original day, it was days, you know, when we cut the ribbon, if you uh, made a mistake, you stopped and had to start over. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those, those things. You learn how to play it perfectly. <laughs> or, you got, uh, you, you got some, some of my favorite songs on here. One of them uh, is coming up next. It's good... Uh, Railroad song. I love railroad music, and uh, you know we were talking earlier about our buddy Stanley Zetner, and his dad was a buddy and a big Jimmy Rogers fan, and yeah. uh, and man, I love that old Jimmy Rogers music. That's really where it all started for us, and uh, we're gonna play this uh, kind of a hobo song here in just a second. But uh, I wanted to ask you first of all, good talking about Ron Knuth, and I think about the fiddle, and I get to thinking about Frenchie Burke. Some thoughts on Frenchie? Uh you know, I to talk to Frenchie. Talk to him. He called me the other day. He He's called... probably listening in right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he is. Hello, Frenchie. I yeah. hope you're doing good, you know. Yeah. He was doing pretty well. He said he's still having trouble playing. You know, he had a stroke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said he was having trouble with his arm. But he but sounded good when I talked to him. Back in the old days, there were, I guess there were occasions when the, when you and the gentleman would back Oh, Frenchie, Frenchie and Ron, you don't have fiddles and look out. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, pretty good trick back, back yeah. in Frenchie is. You talking about Willie a minute ago? You don't pay any attention to his singing. You just play the music. But Frenchie, man, just staying up with him. That's a pretty good choice. Oh, it's a, it's a lot of exercise. Yeah. <laughs> you learn how to play, play fast. But you know, he he has those people in his hands the whole time he's on that stage. Oh, he's incredible. Yeah, he's he's really a good entertainer. Frenchie, good, the room just guy. lights up when Frenchie walks yeah, on the stage. Yeah. Let's hear uh, some hobo music. And did you know this was a hobo song we're going to play now? I'm going to know now. I bet you uh, probably heard this song. Probably your daddy probably sang this to you when you were a little girl. Here's Big Rock Candy Mountain. On a summer's day in the month of May, well, a bird's bum come a-hiking. Down a shady lane with a sugar cane, he was looking for his liking. As he strolled along, well, he sang a song of a land of milk and honey, where a bum stayed for many a day, and he won't be any money. All the buzzing of the bees and the cigarette trees, the soda water fountain, lemonade springs where the bluebird sings in the big rock candy mountain. On a run came a farmer and his son to the hay fields they were bound in. Said the bum to the sun, why don't you come to the big rock candy mountain? So the very next day they hiked away and the milepost they kept counting. But they never did arrive at the lemonade tide in the big rock candy mountain. Oh, the buzzing of the bees and the cigarette trees and the soda water fountain. Lemonade springs where the bluebird sings in the big rock candy mountain. Lemonade springs where the bluebird sings in the big rock candy mountain. 
Oh, man, the big rock candy mountain. All about that hobo coming on down the line. And uh, <laughs> that song goes back a year or two, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Back to the 20s, maybe even back before that. Yeah. 1920s, I'm I had a friend, about. Do, you, uh, do you know Aaron Allen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Aaron used to have a radio show on K-I-T-E. Yeah. And I was, I don't know how old I was. It was 1949, 50, sometime along in there. And I'd lie on the floor. No one ever had air conditioning. You know, it was a summertime. It's hot, but the floor was real cool. as yeah. tile. And I'd lay on the floor to listen to Aaron's radio show, and that was his theme song. Yeah. And he'd come on with the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Yeah. Um, I think Aaron is uh, down around Victoria, somewhere down there. No, he's in Luling. Luling. Yeah. That's pretty close. That's yeah. on the other side of San Antonio. Anyway. Yeah, he's he's good. I've, I've done some of his tunes and, and uh, yeah. some of the earlier albums. Yeah. Well, that's a great one, man. Big Rock Candy Mountain. Oh, I like uh, it. This next song that's coming up here is also a song that's written by a real good buddy of mine. He's a, a man, a Grammy Award winning songwriter and a really talented guy. Joe Allen wrote mm-hmm. one of your songs here. Magic Little Garden. Yeah, he sent me a demo tape years ago and had it on there, and I thought, oh, that's a good song. I, I talked to him about it. He's a really nice guy, you know. Yeah, he is. He's a uh, an old Texas boy, too. One oh, yeah. Texas, yeah. Texas songwriters. They sometimes seem like got a little different a little different take on things. And, yeah, they do. Uh, kind of more way we look at things. Huh? Yeah. All right, well, let's give it a look. You're walking through a garden in my mind A gentle place where happiness surrounds me Where every barefoot kid has got a swing in mind In the magic little garden in my mind It's beautiful for one like me to have a special place Little world where he can go to see a smiling face. My world is full of sunshine, and it's all because of you. You color things as pretty as the eyes you're looking through. You're walking through a garden in my mind, a gentle place where happiness surrounds me. Where every barefoot kid has got a swing in vine In the magic little garden in my mind It's simple just to take a seed and plant it in the ground When you plant it, plant it deep From a tiny acre You can grow a mighty tree You're walking through a garden in my mind A gentle place where happiness surrounds me Where every barefoot kid has got a swing in vine In the magic little garden my mind You're walking through a garden in my mind A gentle place where happiness surrounds me Where every barefoot kid has got a swing in mind In the magic little garden in my mind In the magic little garden in my mind Magic little garden in my mind. Our old buddy Joe Allen wrote that, and uh, boy, that's another uh, one of those Joe Allen songs. And I was just, you know, visiting off air here, George. I was saying that sounds like a Joe Allen song. Great songwriters usually kind of have that signature sound. Don't yeah, they? that's why I like that song. You know, it's very distinctive on the tape, and it was a. Uh, you know, I got to where I think I, I just wanted to do songs that I just felt good about and liked. You know, rather. Than, 
you know, it goes back to the old uh, Ricky Nelson saying, you can't please everybody, so you got to please yourself. There you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the best pieces of philosophy I think I ever heard. Yeah. Well, when it comes to music, that really is uh, because then you're doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. It yeah. comes naturally to you. And just, there's, no, there's no way you could second guess the audience. You know. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely. That's yeah. probably one of the truest things anybody and, ever. And you never know who's paying attention. That's the thing I've learned doing these singles. Yeah. You're up on the bandstand or wherever you're playing in the corner. You know, and everybody's out there drinking and talking and doing what they're doing. And uh, you figure, you know, some people are listening, but you know, yeah. most of them are just having a good time, and you just kind of, yeah. you know, doing a little background stuff for them, yeah. which is fine with me. It pays the same, doesn't matter. Sure. <laughs> right. You know, that three dollars will work well. You know, at a yeah. grocery store. So, <laughs> and some guys are sitting in the back talking all night long and drinking. Comes up and says, "Well, I really like that song you did about so and so, and you did about yeah. this." You know, and, you know, wow. It it, it 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 amazes you. You just can't second guess the folks. Yeah. And how about identify the station for us here? From San Antonio to Uvalde and Pierce, all the Texas Hill, Hill Country, we're listening to KCWM Hondo. That's right. And uh, we, uh, by the way, are your Texas station from the border of the nation. It's 11 o'clock. George is going to stick around with us here a little longer. So we're going to get a chance to get all the songs on. Here's one called New Country Singer. Find him a jukebox and let him crawl in. Strike up the band and let the music begin. Somebody will lose, somebody will win. And a new country singer will sing it again. Somebody will cry And a new country singer Will be riding high
country singer, boy, oh boy, I got him uh, dancing around the lobby at KCWL this morning. There's uh, uh, one of the songs from Aaron Allen and Ron Conduth, a new country singer. And George, that's a great waltz tune, and we were talking about that. Yeah. Folks like to get up and waltz, don't they? Yeah, oh, they do. Dancing around the Victor's yeah. here, my buddy Victor's here, and Carol, and they're out there dancing around the lobby. Here for dancers. Yeah, that's that's that, that's a bona fide country radio station. Right you there, got that it? right. <laughs> They're dancing in the lobby. Yeah, if, if you find somebody who knows how to waltz, it's a real rare occasion nowadays yeah. because uh, you know most of the dancers are out there wiggling around. They're kind of lost, waltz, and they they don't know a waltz from a yeah whatever Watusi. Yeah. <laughs> I can do both. But, uh, yeah, there you go. That's uh, versatile. Versatile. Yeah. Versatility, that's yeah. the thing. I can't do either one of them, really. Um, let's see. What else we have? We, we have gonna, a we have talk. Hold Chambers. on just one, one second. I was just kind of thinking out loud uh-huh. there. We're going to get back to uh, the music here in just one moment. But one of the things I wanted to uh, mention is that we're, we're over time, but we're going to stay here for a little while longer. Because you've got a couple of artists that you've been working with and stuff, and we're going to play uh, some of the, some of their music. And uh, just uh, right now, because we're not finished up with George Chambers yet, but give us their names. You've got R.J. Smith. And, R.J. Smith and Doug Wynn. Okay. And we're going to play a little bit of their music, too. Yeah. So, uh, man, we appreciate you uh, bringing that stuff in here. And appreciate you taking time to come and be here with us. Well, I appreciate you asking me to come down and uh, and be with you. you and know, I, 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 I want really... to mention also you you brought us some uh, CDs to give away, so we're going to be yeah. doing that on the air when we come back off of holiday. I was explaining to you before we uh, I open up the microphones. I'm, I'm going to be kind of in and out during the holidays, but when we come back after uh, the, the holidays are over and get back into the regular swing of things, the the uh, CD the journey continues is going to be our first. Spotlight CD for the year 2015. Well, I appreciate that. And that is where on the morning show we play all the cuts off of there all week long. So we're going to be talking a lot. Well, they'll be so sick of listening to that thing. And uh, (laughs) also some bumper stickers. Who is George Chambers? Ask Willie Nelson. How long have you had that sticker? You've had that sticker a long time. Well, the original sticker just said, Who is George Chambers? Because Willie wrote on our second album, the Feelings album, he wrote the liner notes. Yeah. And. he entitled the liner notes, Who's George Chambers? And yeah. wrote these really, yeah. really nice liner notes about yeah. it, you know. <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine says, you need to make a bumper sticker that says, Who is George Chambers? I said, okay, you handle that, and I'll give you whatever money yeah. it takes to do yeah. that. Huh. And so that was, gosh, back in the early 70s, I think. And then I was working uh, the rodeo in San Antonio with... Uh, Tommy World and the Diamond W Longhorn Ranch Group. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the cowboy shows and I was doing the music, you know, for the cowboy shows. And he says, You ought to have a bumper sticker that says, Who is George Chambers? Ask Willie Nelson. And I said, Well, let me think about that. So I called Johnny Bush. And I said, You going up and play golf with Willie anytime soon? He said, Well, I'm going tomorrow. I said, Well, ask him if we can do this without getting into a big licensing hassle or something. Yeah. And, uh, the phone rang the next day, or uh, yeah, I guess it was the next day. They were up there on the golf course, and he says, "Willie says H yes." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, and that's a great bumper sticker. And, oh, it's, uh, maybe... it's just getting a lot of comments. You know? Oh, the and they're good all. for covering up scratches on your car. <laughs> you can paste them over somebody's mouth for talking too much. Yeah, you know? there you yeah. go. all well, kinds of uses. And there, you see them all over, uh, all over the place too. People driving around with them on their cars and pickups and stuff. Who is George Chambers, and I, he's the guy who sings this next song. What's the name of it? Try Not to Go on Alone. Yeah, we load up our guitars, head for the dance hall Saturday night. Once more, I'm here to play some real country music, fill up that old dance floor. Now the dancers appear, seems out of nowhere to hear the music we play. They're all in the mood for a honking good party. No. 
know We'll sing of the lovers and sing of the heartbreak Try not to go home alone And the party is over Everyone's heading for home They'll dream of the drinking And the smoky old dance halls And the girls they wish they had known They'll dream of the lovers And dream of the heartbreak Why did they go home alone? Chambers, and uh, we're asking the question, who is George Chambers? He's uh, not only the guy that sang that song, right, and but... He's the one who wrote it. Yeah. Good song, George. Well, thank you. Try yeah, not to go it. home alone. Yeah. And we've got one more song remaining off the uh, Journey Continues CD with George Chambers and the Country Gentleman. And here's a... I was talking about the uh, songwriters on here. Man, that's pretty pretty strong list. Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard. Robert Earl Keane, and the list goes on, and uh, also our buddy Joe Allen. And here's another song that was written by a good friend of uh, the radio station, a good uh, good old buddy of mine. Jim Chestnut wrote this last yeah. song on here. Jim. He did something else. What? Tell me about, uh, before we play this song, let's talk about the DVD that Chestnut Oh, the DVD, he, he just came in one day and said uh, he wanted to produce a DVD on the, the band, you know, the uh, even though the music business has changed, the band is still working, you know, some dates and still playing and doing this and that. And the disappearance, basically the disappearance of most of the dance halls. Yeah. And uh, we had some video from a thing we did on Channel 9 years and years ago and some other stuff. And he interviewed a bunch of people, you know, in it. And, and he called it Fading Memories, just the idea that, you know, the, Halls are kind of fading away. Yeah, sure. And he wrote this tune. It's the theme tune for that DVD. But it's a good country song. I mean, it's a re- it's the real thing. Well, let's uh, give that a listen. It's Jim Chestnut's uh, song, Fading Memories. And once again, here's George Chambers. I've got faith. Kids. 
We didn't have much, but we had good times. Yes, we surely did. And I've got fading memories in my mind. Fading memories of good times. Chambers at KCW. I'm George Chambers and the country gentleman. And uh, old buddy Jim Chestnut wrote that song right there. And uh, also uh, built a DVD around it and, and around the George Chambers sound and around South Texas country music. It's not what it used to be. It's uh, it's changed, and we have yeah. to change. We have to do that. But there's still a few. We sure want to preserve the diehards out there. That... Yeah, we want to preserve <laughs> the real deal, don't we? Yeah. The journey continues. Uh, George Chambers and the country gentleman, and of course Chance the dog. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, encourage everybody to uh, to get out to your shows where they can pick up uh, a copy of this. Well, you're going to be. You. You're going to be. Uh, we're gonna, we, we're not done yet, George. Not going to let you go yet because we got a couple more That's all right. things that we want to talk about. And uh, then, uh, but I do want to ask you right now because if somebody's looking to uh, to pick up one of the CDs, they can do that at, at some of the steakhouses and the gigs that you're playing. You're playing yeah. at Grady's. Uh, how do we find out when when you're going to be out at Grady's? Oh, you just have to call them because it's it's. Uh, I, do it, I do it two times a month, okay. and it's you know kind of random. It depends on how the schedule falls. Okay. And uh, on their on their website, they'll they'll uh, they publicize it also on the Grady's website. Okay. Do they? We they, go. they do. Is that Grady's dot com? We're talking about the barbecue place. Barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Grady's. Yeah. Ann has a, a very good friend. I was telling you, he's also a friend of mine now, but he's a longtime friend of Ann's that plays uh, Grady's on the nights when you're not there. Many times you see him, Rick Salinas. Yeah. He yeah. does a great job. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a nice guy. Rick's, Rick's good singer. Yeah, he, and he uh, does, does well. in fact, he's going to be at Grady's out on Bandera Road this coming Friday night. So anyway, I'm going to get out to... Uh, well, I need to call him warning him <laughs> about the PA system, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is it tricky? Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the main speakers have come unplugged. Oh. Oh. I don't know if it's the guys that played there last weekend, so they couldn't get the mains to work. Uh -huh. So they just turned the monitors out and used them. You know, you're not playing loud in there anyway. So uh, yeah. How big a room is that that we're talking about? That's It'll hold a couple hundred people. Oh, okay. So it's it's, pretty it's good the old dance hall, the, the, old, the dance hall park. Oh, okay. And what they did, uh, the back room is a party room, but in the old days, that was part of the dance hall that had garage doors back there. And if yeah. they had a big crowd, they'd open it and yeah. put people back mm -hmm. in that back yeah. room yeah. back there. And then they got another party room out there. Mm -hmm. Across the parking lot, over there. Yeah. Whatever happened to what's his name that used to have that place? You know who I'm talking about? Oh, the Frank, uh, the Frank. bar? No, the barber. The guy that had it uh, in oh. more recent years. 
uh, songwriter, songwriting barber, uh, yeah, I, Conrad Pierce. Conrad. I don't know what happened to Conrad. I haven't seen him in a long time. He down. had the Texas Star in, and then the next thing yeah, you know, know. he was long gone, so yeah, he went back went to through, Nashville. You know, after Frank sold it, it went through two or three owners, and then, then Grady bought it, made yeah. a barbecue place out yeah. of it, and, and then uh, Grady himself bought it, and then yeah. Grady sold it to, uh, uh, what's the name of that? Company anyway, it's a corporation there in San Antonio. It owned Columbia Bowling Balls, and uh, oh yeah. Uh, it, well, it's a good move because man, it's a great place to get a barbecue meal and uh, hear some good old music with George Chambers and uh, also Rick Salinas, our yeah. buddy. Who else is playing? Doug, Doug Wynn. Okay, he's one, one, of, one of the plays out there in and, the rotation. Uh, and, uh, who else is playing that thing? Uh, Leonard Rodriguez plays it once in a while, and. Um, that's some regulars like Doug and I and, and Rick. Yeah. Uh, and then, shoot, I'm trying to think who else. <laughs> you draw a blank here. <laughs> well, when you said Leonard Rodriguez, you can just stop right there yeah. because yeah. <laughs> no sense in going any farther than that. He's a good old buddy, also. Yeah. And uh, good so, singer. anyway, it's good music out there at yeah. Grady's. And so yeah, I need sometimes I don't think Grady's knows what, what they've really got there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, George, we, of course, uh, you know, always encourage people to get out and support the live music because it is. It's part of our heritage, and there's a particular aspect of it here in South Texas, and that's we. It is fading, and we want to preserve it. And uh, the the only way we can preserve that is for folks to get out and support yeah. those that are doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's it's, it's really strange because uh, I've been doing it almost twelve years, I guess, okay. seven years, yeah. something. Anyway, <laughs> I never get a request for a new song. Yeah. And some of that's just the demographic that's in there. But there's a the demographic runs from like five years old to five hundred. Yeah. And uh a lot of times I'll get somebody's in their late teens, early twenties will come up with a bandstand and they want to hear an old Johnny Cash song. Yeah. You know? Well it's and not i just yeah, they're not necessarily the popular ones, yeah. uh, the, the the little more obscure things like that. Or yeah, there's no age price. confinement because, yeah. uh, man, I'll tell you, you, know, you little kids love San Antonio Rose and stuff oh, like yeah. that. It's oh, all yeah. about the music. Yeah. All right, well, let's play something well, from, let's hear one from Doug. Doug you're going to have to tell me what cut we're playing here. South Greenwood to Town, number four. Number four? All right. Yeah, that's a waltz. Last Rainbow to Town. Last 
rainbow to tell I'm sad to see you not around Doug Wynn, KCWM, and uh, the last Rainbow to Town. That's one of the guys, and that plays out at uh, Grady's. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were telling us you can get that information on their website? You can, yes. Okay. What is it? Uh, it's uh, www.grady's.com, I think. That's pretty easy. How you just spell? Google Grady's. It'll come Grady's? right up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Just Grady's. If you put barbecue, it'll probably definitely you can it, Google it. It will. Right it will just come up. All right. Doug Wynn, and he's out there uh, regularly. So you have to yeah, play. he does a couple of. Now, now, you guys play at both Grady's locations, or are you just uh, well, I play, play Vandera Road? I play Vandera Road 90% of the time. The only yeah. uh, Grady's. Sometimes I'll play the Wetmore place. The only two yeah. places they have... Uh, Entertainment is Wetmore and, and Bandera Road. Right. And but you primarily over on Bandera yeah. Road. And, yeah, it's yeah. close to my house. Yeah. Oh. And then Rick <laughs> Salinas, I guess, is primarily over at Wetmore. He plays. Yeah, he's playing both of them. He yeah. does yeah. both. He alternates. Yeah. yeah. He's a uh, he does a great job. As a matter of fact, we saw him the other night. He's so uh, one person, but it sounds yeah. like he's got. He invited me to come out to Friday night and bring my guitar. He nice. said he'd let me get up and sing. Yeah, a he's got of songs, some tracks. So. You know, he's got. You know, he's got his iPad on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, he, yeah. he put out some bass it's tracks. A full band, and then he's playing. It sounds like right. yeah. yeah. He, he did a good, nice job on those tracks. It's I'm really not a big good. fan of, of using tracks, but he's yeah. his sound good. Most guys they really do. Yeah, you know, put too much stuff in them, but his are real basic yeah. and. Really nice. The only problem with that is if somebody comes up to talk to you or something, you get lost in a hurry because the track ain't going to stop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It keeps on going. Yeah. But he does, he does a good job. He's a good singer, and he's, yeah. a, he's a nice man, too. Yeah. And uh, you're also playing, uh, well, you're playing that kind of regular, and then you got, uh, you know, you always got other things that are going on that are not so much regular deals. Playing yeah. here and there. We're doing spec store. Cowboy stuff. Once in a while, I'm doing New Year's Eve out at a place called Chestnut and I are going to go out to a place called Rusty Spur, which is on Blanco Road. That sounds right. like a fine place, right? Oh, it's a deal. Rusty I'm Spur. I'm doing that Rusty Spur. I thought, wow, what's yeah. this going to be? We went yeah. out there and looked at it. But yeah. it's just when you cross Cibolo Creek, go into Comal County on Blanco Road, it's about a quarter of a mile up there on the That's right. New Year's Eve? Yeah, we're, okay. Jim and I are going to go do a duo out you there. You need reservations for that, probably, huh? Uh, well, I'd like to think so, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, New Year's Eve, George. If you can't pack them in on New Year's Eve, brother, you, just, okay. <laughs> you know, I haven't, <laughs> I, haven't, else. I haven't played a New Year's Eve in I don't know how many years. You know, yeah. just, I've never had, I just, I just haven't chased it, you know. Yeah, it's more fun not to sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the worst part was getting on the highway after. Oh, there. man. I used yeah. To, the highway patrol used to come into the cabaret club, you know, about 1230, and they'd yeah. come in and, and stand at the door. Yeah. And I'd go over and say, you guys get out of here and go get those drunks off the road before we right. get on the road for yeah, that bus. for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, uh, the other, one of the places you're playing regularly is you're playing on the mighty San Antonio Riverwalk. And what's what's that all about? Oh, I'm, I, uh, I'm just a, I'm the hired musician with a, a lady named R.J. Smith that plays with the Bobby Flores Yellow Rose Band. She plays fiddle, and uh, she even got this thing down on the river at uh, the Republic of Texas restaurant on Sundays and Mondays, and I play on Sundays with her down there, and I'm just, uh, I'm the band, and <laughs> she's the star, <laughs> and so I stand around and play rhythm guitar, and she plays, we play old fiddle music. With the exception of a few things like wow. Danny Boy yeah. and uh, Shogun Farewell from the Civil War series that Ken Burns did, yeah. and uh, Blue Spanish Eyes, she does that. And well, there's not too many places where you can go and hear the, with the emphasis on old fiddle music. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, people just you know probably 75 to 80 percent of what we have down there is tourists. Yeah, sure. but they love that stuff, oh, man. Sure. You know, they're not hearing it anywhere. We're gonna play something and, from her that I'm kind of curious about because there's some other great fiddle players on there with her. Bobby Flores and mm -hmm. Hank Singer. Oh, play that! Yeah, that's <laughs> and she actually she plays fiddle for Bobby. Yeah, she plays regular. fiddle, and so does Hank. Yeah, 
You know, and, uh, those three fiddles are just incredible. So this is the string section of the Yellow Rose Band right yes, here. Yes, it is. Let's yeah. play this. Uh, what's her name again? R.J. Smith. R.J. Smith. And she's appearing regularly at the uh, Republic, Republic of Texas, Texas Restaurant, Mondays, Sundays and Mondays. And I asked you, if, uh, you know, with a name like that, Republic of Texas, I said, can you get a... Chicken fried steak in there. You say their nachos are exceptional. Yeah, but I never have. I'm sure they have chicken fried steak. You know, I never look at the menu. You know. All right. Well, we're gonna check that out. Well, they've got good food. Over, I I'm know that. I'm you gonna know, come over and look at y'all Sunday. Do that. I'm gonna come out there and give it a listen, man. I love fiddle. That music. won't take you too long to look at us. <laughs> 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 Nothing better than listening to fiddle music. Let's listen to some right now. Here's Made It Love. Man, if you're going to play a fiddle song, that's uh, that's about as good as it gets right there. Well, you're not so kidding. Faded Love. Boy, that's uh, R.J. Smith, who George Chambers works with regularly. They perform down at the uh, Riverwalk at the Republic of Texas every yeah. Sunday evening. Oh, thank you for that. And uh, also uh, on that, uh, that particular cut on that album right there, Bobby Flores, who I think most people know Bobby, and also another one of the great Texas fiddle players, Hank Singer. 
Triple fiddles, man. There's, you know, I've always said there's only one thing better than a fiddle on a bandstand. That's two fiddles. Yeah, and you get three. You know, and you particularly three, if they you know get three what fiddles like that to know what they're doing. <coughs> yeah, you're in really good shape. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's they're incredible. You know, just uh, really, really fine. All right, uh, I gotta, I gotta mention, George, before we uh, go here. Well, appreciate you coming down to begin with. Well, I want to thank us. you for having me. This has really been fun. And yeah, appreciate you giving us. I don't know why we hadn't done this before, yeah. but it, uh, one of those deals, I guess. You know, we just hadn't been able to coordinate it. Yeah, yet, but but I appreciate I'll, you staying and giving us some extra time because well, uh, I appreciate you letting me come down. So and, much music and so little time. You know, visit with you, you know. It's, it's really nice of you to do things like this, you know, because a lot of radio doesn't do it anymore. And, yeah. and uh, the artists and players, you know, are really appreciative of places like like you here that, that take the time to recognize you know, what they do and talk to them about it. And uh, listeners like to hear, you know, the, the s- stories. In the, the inside scoop. The yeah. And, yeah, the, you behind know. Behind the scenes. Uh, things that they wouldn't be privy to, you know, on just an ordinary basis. But, you know, it gives them, gives them a venue. You know, you're nice enough to do that. And, yeah. and we really, really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you guys. And uh, and I want to mention uh, one of the we've, – we've dropped a lot of names here uh, this morning. And uh, be remiss without uh, mentioning a little bit more about our, our great mutual friend, Max Gardner. You know, Max was uh, uh, I was one of the one of the chosen few who got to call him Uncle Max and not everybody got to call him that. Yeah, I know that, that. He, he he thought uh, thought a lot of you if if you get allowed to you. you call him that. So yeah, I, I met him me and Johnny Rodriguez called him Unc. Oh. You know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, Johnny Rod. He was a wonderful guy and I'll tell you what, uh, we talk about South Texas country music. Yeah, he was time you see Johnny Rod tell him I said hi, you know, I'll do that. He used to come to Quehe and crawl in the back window yeah. and sing to let yeah. him out. Yeah, we were playing down yeah. there way back before. Sure. Yeah, I wanted to ask you something. Also, also <clears throat> it reminds me uh, before we uh, go away entirely here this morning, we were talking about McDonough, the dance hall there at McDonough, and you said you've got an old transcription of Bob Wills and the boys playing out there with all the Wills brothers. And uh, I don't want to let you forget, you said you'd make me a copy of that. Well, I, I will do that. that. Yeah. I want that song play it here on the radio station. Yeah, it's, get it's, everybody to listen it's, to it. It's, you'll, it's, it's really transcription sounding, you know. But what about the old McDonough dance hall? Boy, there were some legendary but, groups oh, there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember they used to do Maddox Brothers and Rose. Hank Williams Hank played Williams. one of his last dates out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Hank played his last birthday at a place called The Barn, which was on Highway 90 East. Charlie Walker and some other guys owned that thing. Wow. But it was called The Barn. And they had all the stars at Webb Pierce and all those guys played it. But Hank played, his birthday was September 17th. Yeah. And he played The Barn on 17, on September 17th, and he died, you know, in January, New, New Year's Eve. <clears throat> yeah. That year. Another guy I want to mention that uh, I see on the on some of the liner information on one of your CDs, who was a great uh, friend in the radio business and also a great musician buddy, Mr. B. Bailey Brown. Oh, B. Yeah, he was I got so back a long way with B. Yeah, he yeah. was a good guy. You know, he played on uh, on the friend, which album is his Sunset. Well, what, well in the uh, Privileged Audience album, he did uh, played. Uh, on some of that stuff in there on uh, Sunset Woman and I've forgotten what else but he played steel and played a little guitar on yeah. some of that stuff and I'd known B since he was like started 15 years old yeah you know and he started out in the radio business yeah. as the fastest tongue in the west and yeah. he could he could fly through a radio commercial <laughs> about double speed Bernard Bailey Brown <laughs> One of the, I, I'll tell you a quick funny story with you know you, you and I had a lot of mutual friends over there at uh, 680 back in those days and uh, one of them was Rick Tanner, and no Tanner. Uh, I was over there one day visiting with Rick, and B came in, and he bought a fiddle. Of, of, uh, well, it wasn't a new fiddle. He bought it, but it was new to him. It was a fiddle that he had bought. And he came in, and he was showing it to us, and he said, yeah, man. He said, what do you think of this fiddle? And Rick said, boy, that's a nice fiddle. You know, how much is that thing worth? And, oh, it's you know worth $2,000 or whatever, you know, that he had paid for it. Golly, why is it worth so much? He said, well, because the thing's 200 years old. This fiddle, you know, 200-year-old fiddle. And Tanner asked him, he said, what are you going to do with it, B? And he said, what do you think I'm going to do with it? I'm going to learn to play it. 
Rick said, I'm not sure it's going to last another 200 years. <laughs> but B was a talented uh, musician also. Oh, yes, and he, he, was. Was a, he was a great friend. He was a wonderful guy to me in the radio business. Yeah, he was, and he was a good guy. Yeah. And I can, we can go on and on and uh, you know keep dropping names. I know Billy Mata is a guy that you think a lot of also. And he, oh, yeah, Billy's a good boy. He's doing a lot for our heritage. Yeah, and, uh, he sure is. And I wanted to ask you about a guy I know that you crossed paths with uh, several times back uh, many years ago, probably like me, less in recent history, but a kid by the name of George Strait. Yeah, <laughs> the last time I saw Strait was in Oklahoma City and... Uh, you know, to talk to him. Yeah. In 1987, we were doing the Daryl and Willie golf tournament. Yeah. And uh, he was on it. We were doing the backup. You know, he came walking up on stage. Said, well, George, what can we do? Yeah. You used to uh, play a lot of the same venues. Oh George yeah, I played venues. Crystal Chandelier, Pat's Hall, and those places. Yeah. When we did the, we did the 150th anniversary of uh, Fredericksburg, and they recreated Pat's Hall out at the fairgrounds. They put the tree in the middle of the wow. patio and all that yeah. stuff. And they had a bunch of memorabilia there. And they had a contract for the Ace and the Hole Band. Right. Uh, George didn't even get billing on that, probably. Well, he signed the contract. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. for $350. Yeah. For the Ace and the Hole Band. Yeah. <laughs> signed by George Strait. That's crazy. You know. But. Yeah, I always tell everybody he lives down the road from me because he lives in the Dominion. He lives just down the road. He lives on the other side of the gate, though, George. Yeah. The and when, you know, when we do, uh, sometimes we'll do these hitchhiking cowboy bus rides where you get on the bus and sing to the tourists when they're taking them to Don Strange Ranch or somewhere. Yeah, to talk a little more specifically about that. I know what you're talking about, but a lot of folks may not. Well, what they do is just use it for entertainment so the people don't think the ride is so far out in the country. Yeah. But they'll hire a bunch of guys, you know, and you put on your cowboy hat and your bandana and your boots and you get in the bus and you sing to these folks while they're traveling up yeah. there. Or, or you'll be on the side of the road and the bus will stop. Yeah, they're, they're, you know? they're like hitchhikers, you yeah. know, and the people on the bus don't know a thing. Yeah. They, 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 what are we stopping for, you know? Yeah. They probably figure they're getting, if they're from up north particularly, they probably figure they're getting waylaid. They're going to get hijacked, robbed or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but those those are always fun, you know. But every time we go on one, you know, we go past the Dominion, I was that. George Strait's house right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's up on the top of the hill. He lives on the hill. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's all about the music, George, and uh, yeah, just before is. you leave here this morning, let me ask you, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you probably don't have any idea, but maybe a rough number. How many dance halls have you played as far as, you know, I mean, I realize you play one, you know, over and over repeatedly, uh, you know, the Farmer's Daughter, the Golden Stay, and the Wagon Wheel, or wherever it is, but just on individual total number of nights, how many times do you think you've been on a bandstand? Oh, good gosh, I don't have a clue. I'd have to sit down and write them all down and see yeah. which ones they were, you know. Because yeah. we played in Round Rock. We played all those old clubs like Panama Maria and Sestahoven down in that area and Corpus Christi and Robstown and the list of you know, Houston. And, and yeah. just Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, just anywhere. South Texas pretty much. We played Panther Hall in Fort Worth a few times. And, uh, Any standout memories as to uh, maybe the the best best show you ever had or the best crowd you ever worked? Or? Oh, shoot, it's hard to get that. They're all about the same. A bunch of them were really good, you know. Yeah. Nobody threw anything at us. Yeah. <laughs> so, at yeah. Frontier Town one time, somebody threw a beer bottle through the front window of the bus. Well, it didn't go through, but it broke the window. Wow. Well, the, drive, the passenger side. <laughs> But, uh, it just adds a little more atmosphere yeah. and excitement. Huh? Yeah. All right. Well, you didn't have Chance with you back in those days. No, that's right. He had got Chance. There. He'd have gotten their case <laughs> right quick. <laughs> taking care of that. George Chambers and the country gentleman. George, thank you so much well, for bringing the CD so much, down Mike. for us to give away the bumper stickers. We're gonna, as I said, we're gonna uh, spotlight the CD when I come back off of the holiday, and. Uh, First spotlight CD well, for thank you so 15 much. will be George uh, Chambers. I really Jones. appreciate that. That's uh, that's really nice because I know you got a lot of records that you you know need to play. And I appreciate you taking time to do that.
Well, I appreciate you coming in, and uh, Ann, did you learn anything today? So, I learned so much. Quite a history lesson. <laughs> yes, a history lesson right. in music. And the old professor here. <laughs> a little window. bit of biology. Is this going to be an open book test? We're going to have, have a here? test tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your pen and your notebook paper. Yeah. All right. George, thanks for coming, man. Thanks Thank for everybody you, that came by to see you today. Lots of company here at the radio station. We appreciate yeah, them. appreciate that, yeah. All that yeah. dropping by. You can tell they didn't have much to do. And uh, I'll be looking for you. I'm going I'm to get out there Sunday evening if the weather's oh, right. I'm going right. to be there in the crowd. And yeah, if the weather's bad, we're not going to go out there. I guarantee yeah. you that. All right. Well, we'll <laughs> see what happens with it. You're listening to KCWM Hondo at 1460 and on the World Wide Web at KCWM.net. Uh, the uh, home of uh, the morning show with Mike Carr and today with Ann Lucas and uh, Carr tunes on the radio. And we've got some George tunes on the radio today, too. George Chambers and the Country Gentleman. Get out and see George first time you get a chance. And uh, stay tuned to uh, KCWM. Of course, you'll be hearing a lot more from him here on 1460 and KCWM.net. It's time again for the KCWM Great Christmas Tamale Giveaway. When you hear Santa Claus jingle bells and hearty ho, 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 call 830-741-5296. Break out the eggnog and the Christmas lights, sing jingle bells and a silent night. If you're the first caller, we'll put a package of tamales underneath the KCWM Christmas tree for you. Pick up your tamales during the morning show party on Christmas Eve. Stay tuned for your chance to win tamales from the Great Christmas Tamale Giveaway. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from KCWL.